guys welcome 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 to the stream what a stream we have for you today this is hopefully going to be very revealing and interesting for you guys um this has been a hot topic all week uh before we get into it i gotta get my main man the squatch box on make sure you guys are following him on the gram the underscore squatch box and of course we have our man brian from the let's talk live podcast make sure you check him out on the tubes we'll be dropping his link actually it's in the description below and I'm sure you all want to know who the uh, special guest is, the TPG Insider, as I have him listed. I didn't want to give too much away. There's some people guessing, but um, we're going to keep him backstage for just a, a few a minute or two. Uh, we do have him with us. I just want to run through the chat, do what we normally do. We'll start off with the wristwatch check. I'm wearing the Vacheron overseas on the white rubber strap. Uh, he's got his trusty Hanna Basara. And what do you got there, Brian? Is that the Speedy? I can't see. The Ebo. Oh. 1811 discovery yeah all right so let's run through the chat see who we got hanging with us we got swiftest maximus we got my man mookie we got our first super chat of the evening let's talk live podcast with a two dollar super chat says get your popcorn ready we got member of the crew lone star watch collector by the way guys make sure you subscribe so you can leave comments uh you must be a subscriber to the channel we got our man shogun another member of the crew if you guys want to become members click the join button down below bronze leveling up get membership for the whatsapp group we have shown up with a ten dollar super chat says in lbi this weekend with the family just wanted to show some love and support have a great show i'll watch when the two lunatics are passed out shout out to our friends dean and joseph we got jake brooks we got pj welcome guys uh we got lone star 512 he says did you know they pump oxygen into the rooms in vegas absolutely they do that in all casinos to keep you pumped up and spending money we got jeff lane with the two dollar super chat he says get out your sticks and let's see what else do we have here we got my man jiggity in the house we got a member of the crew bubba hotep uh, he says what's up watch people the <laughs> plans canceled there's no way i'm missing this live interview <laughs> i don't blame you bubba i don't blame you at all uh let's see we got a few people guessing who's the uh, special guest but we cannot tell you just yet. We got my man Tectology in the house reminding everyone to upvote. That's right, guys. This is going to be a big one. So make sure you smash the like button. Smash it. Smash it well. We got a super sticker from my man Toyota Mo, $1.49. Thank you, Mo. Um, guys, if I'm missing them, I'm just trying to get through everything here and uh, I want to get the show on the road. But uh, I'll make sure I try to get you all. We got Tommy in the house. Got my man, the medium legend himself, Toyota Mo. Uh, let's see. What else do we got here? We got a super sticker from REG. We got a $4.99 super chat from Tiktology. He says, super sticker. Thank you. And we got BM with the $20 super chat. Thank you, BM. Greatly appreciate that. All right, guys. Let's what do you say? Let's get this party started. All right. So, guys, I want you to give a warm welcome to our special guest, the TPG insider, the guy with the info, the guy who's going to tell us his story today. Let's introduce and give a warm welcome to our friend, Wesley Stokes. Welcome, Wesley. Thanks for joining us today. How's it going? Good. How are y'all? Doing well, doing well. Um, so, you know, just a little backstory for anyone who don't know. Um, a mutual um, person that we know ha has kind of been in contact with us both and arranged this. Um, Wesley has some you know, a story to tell, and we want to provide him a platform to get his side of the story. Um, you know, there's been a lot of rumors and Reddit posts and a lot of nonsense going around and a lot of stuff that might be true going around. Tonight, we're going to decipher what's what. Um, so first of all, I'd like to thank you, Wesley, for joining us. I appreciate you taking the time out to be here. And um, if you want to start us off and maybe, you know, uh, give us a little info on you, what do you want to say? You know, what would you like to say and all that stuff? And then we could go from there. Yeah, um, I guess when Ethan reached out, I didn't know what to so much expect, but um, just all kinds of stories. I've heard a thousand stories about myself this week, so <laughs> like a good platform just to be, you know, tell the truth about it all. Right, right. Um, and this is kind of what I do for fun. Um, it's not a full time thing, um, so you know, it's really affected the rest of my my professional life, my professional life. So you know, get it out of the way, hopefully. Yeah, I, I totally get that. And just uh, just to give you a little heads up throughout the way, there will be 
um, some people super chatting who, you know, will, will be asking questions and making comments. I will pull up periodically, such as this one from our friend Real World Curly with a $10 super chat. says, JJ, I'm glad you engaged Mike the Snake mode. Please put this towards a better play school camera. I have my popcorn. JJ and crew always bring the truth. Welcome to a class channel, Wesley. There you go. Thank you. So I basically, I guess we'll start with, uh, you know, how did it all start? How did you meet? Like, you know, uh, were you a customer of his? Were you a student? Um, you know, um, did you ex ex uh, decide to expand your business? Like, what, what was the deal with that? No, uh, last Christmas, I went to buy my wife a, another Rolex, went to 380s. I mean, it was a joke. I could get an OP or something. So however it works that night, I was laying in bed scrolling TikTok, and there's Anthony. Um, okay. log onto his website. He didn't have what I wanted. I called him, I think on Monday, Tuesday, the watch was at my house. Perfect. Brand new in the box. So, um, you know, did a good deal. I'd say that happened five or six times more in the next three or four months. Um, and you know, that's how we, that's how we met. Um, eventually after buying a few pieces, you know, he started asking about investments and all of that crap. Um, it just wasn't a good fit for us to just throw some money out there. In my, my opinion, you know, a good business, that's what a bank's for. So if, if there was a good plan there, they would loan it. Um, you know, watching his ticks kind of got me wanting to do the, I mean, I guess there's a thousand people doing it, but a little buy, watch, sell it, try to make some money. The majority of the times you lose your ass, but um, that's what I've learned. Um, and through the process, I bought a lot of inventory. And I, and I guess I'd still talk to him a little bit. And he had mentioned, you know, since I didn't want to do an investment, what if I put five or six pieces on Memo, he'd sell them. And then, you know, I got a percent of the profit. Right. Now, just so everybody knows, Memo is when you give a watch on consignment and he pays you once once it's sold. Or, you know, usually Memo, B, B2B Memo is like 30 days. But I guess in the customer's sake, it would be different. But I'm curious, like when this started, right? Um, did you know anything about him beforehand? Like when he did the whole media blackout on YouTube or did you know about like his prior like incarcerations or uh, anything about the substance abuse claims, anything like that? Um, I mean, I knew a little bit, but I wasn't aware about it all until, um, somebody sent me a link to Reddit that said that, um, I mean, all the crap that they said about me when he came over to do that, uh, the video when you know, I guess it looked like he delivered me a bunch of washes. Um, everything they said about me was a lie. Um, basically anthony said you know everything he said about him was a lie i believed it i mean i didn't dig any deeper i mean i just i, I didn't think much into it um, he had always been good to me and i based our uh our decision on on that and that, that's how i moved forward we just we had five or six good deals and that was it so you you know you said that you were trying to buy a, a Rolex. You went to the AD, so that's how you met Anthony. Then you kind of transitioned and you bought a couple more, and then you started buying more watches and dabbling in the industry. The transition into dabbling in the industry was that with Anthony as like a guiding force, because one of the things that had been said on Reddit allegedly through interviewing you was that you were involved in a lot of dealer chats after a while. So you were getting closer. So that was, was that through introduction with Anthony or was that independent? Um, I guess a little bit of both. So whenever initially I bought stuff just from people I found on, like uh, I met a really good friend of mine through here through like a Rolex watch club or something. And he's a, he's a, a big dealer on the East coast. I, um, I did a bunch of that when Anthony agreed to let me do the, uh, or I agreed, we kind of mutually agreed to do the memo deal. The, the deal was he knew I wanted to dabble in, you know, buying and selling some watches. So he would put me in his five or six dealer chats um, so I could kind of learn some of the stuff and I could I could deal with them people directly. And at the same time, he would be selling some of my inventory. Um, and to be fair, the numbers that Anthony sold stuff for um, was way, way, way higher than what you see in the chats um, or, or what it appeared he sold them for. At the, this point, I don't know if it was all real or fake. At least the margins he claimed. Yes, yes. Right. So you're in the dealer chats. You build up a fairly substantial inventory of your own. And because he is alleging to sell them at better margins, at that point you agree to consign with him about a half million dollars in watches? Well, so we started with five. Um, I gave him five. Within a week he sold those. I got five all five. of my our initial up front back prospect probably four or $5,000. I thought it was great. Next week I sent him 10. Um, he kind of turned those around and, and 
I don't know the exact date, but we uh, it was just like I was dabbling in the little chats and the return I was getting back from him was a lot greater than what I was doing. So we just said we would, you know, send 50 or 60 pieces over there. Um, and, and we did. We set up an army truck delivery and they got delivered. Um, so, I and I apologize for interrupting that yeah. answer, but the 50, 60 pieces that had you just recently accumulated through the dealer chat, or was this like a history of pieces? No, I mean, so I've got some pieces that I care about and I'll, I'm never going to get rid of, which is a lot of what I did buy from Anthony originally in the starts and, you know, okay. some real high end stuff. But I had a bunch of just, I mean, I bought so much on Chrono and I probably did buy 30 or 40 in the dealer chats to start with, but nothing, okay. nothing crazy. I mean, like, five to fifteen thousand dollar pieces is, is kind of what he got you know initially right up front and then on top of that i picked up a few um i don't know what you would call them hundred thousand dollar plus watches and I, i'd also sent some of those because he had had sold orders um and i sent those over there and hindsight 2020 he'd have been a lot better just to buy those from another dealer and sell them to his customer as opposed to giving me half of the profit. Um, and I didn't think about it that way. I just thought he was looking out for me. So I did it and I sent him over and um, we've got a big spreadsheet where every time they sell a watch, he would type it in there and say, um, you know, this is who he sold it to and how much it was. And, you know, I'm looking at a spreadsheet seeing, you know, what looks like good numbers. Um, I was supposed to get paid every Tuesday and I did the first you know month or whatever it was. Well, that Tuesday came around and, um, you know, nothing happened. He had he had a few excuses and sounded good enough to me. Um, I just I went along with it. Friday and Saturday, um, I run another business and managers there kind of helped me with this situation. He um, they didn't have a good feeling about it. Um, anyway, I, I had a, a long conversation with Z, like Anthony's whatever you would call him, his right hand man. Z didn't have really much dealing at all with our stuff until this point, but anything wasn't giving me the answers I needed. So I just reached out to Z and I think that kind of maybe upset Anthony, but I really think there were things going on that only Anthony knew about. Cause when I brought it to Z's attention, he started asking questions. And then within 12 hours, it's like me and him had figured the whole thing out. And Anthony called, he was, um, I mean, he sounded like he was drunk. I don't know. But he just confessed, you know, basically everything that was going on. You know, so, like Wesley, time, I, go, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Brian, I'm you sorry. Go. You're the host. Go ahead. I, I just wanted to touch on one thing and then we'll go to you. I just I notice a lot of times when um, people get upset when you contact someone else, they know it's because they're trying to compartmentalize things and usually have something to hide. That, that was all I was going to say. But yeah, you, you go, Brian. Yeah, sure. So I got a quick question. If I can just kind of back you up to the beginning and it's something that kind of stuck with me. You said that you did a couple of watch deals with him and then he started kind of hitting you up about investing. Was this the initial investment and it, it, what he had in mind and it turned into this or was there something else that he was hitting you up about first? No, no. He asked for half a million dollars, um, said that uh, his 90 percent of his business was uh, online and through like social media said he had so many uh, walk-in foot, foot clients every day. He just needed something in the showcase. He didn't need, a, you know, the real big pieces. He could always source those. He just wanted, you know, your simple date, just little, you know, $15,000 watches. He was just trying to put a display of them up. And, and I really considered it because, again, keep in mind, everything this man had told me to this point, but, you know, I'm not saying it was true, but it happened. Sure. Anytime he promised something, it came through. I mean, if I ordered something today, I got it tomorrow. I literally at this point ordered over a million dollars of washes through Anthony as a retail client and never had a bad interaction. Um, so I considered the half a million dollar thing. Um, you know, I don't just make decisions like that by myself. I, I talk with my, my people that matter and it just didn't make sense. You know, any business that's turned in the numbers he claimed could easily get a half a million dollars. What, um, was, what was his pitch? I'm sorry to cut you off. Like what was his initial pitch to you? Um, Really, it wasn't crazy. Like, it, I think he wanted a half million dollars. He would pay it back in six months at like seven or ten percent. So, I think any bank would do something like that on a, on a yeah. you know, an eighty day yeah, note. It, right. He he really made it seem like he knew at this point that um I really liked it. I wanted to learn more about the stuff, and it was just like trying to include me. Um, and, and I mean, to be honest with you, I, I appreciate it. I had. 
I'm typically a very, very good judge of character, I would say. Um, man, he had me fooled. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's my So it's fault. interesting for me to know, right, that when you talk about, like, you bought, you had, you had bought 30, 40 watches, bought stuff on Chrono 24, this is all based on your prior, you know, businesses. Um, <clears> and, and you obviously had the income. So it's, you're not somebody who was, like, putting their last $20,000 into Watch University to try to become a watch dealer, right? So you're not yeah. somebody who's coming at it from the Daniel Mac, somebody who was driving an Audi R8, right? So yes. with that in mind... I'm going to ask you one of the questions that, that a lot of people have been interested in. It's a rumor on Reddit and just give you an opportunity to respond to it directly if you want, that there were things like behind the scenes, PPP loans and other things taken as part of this. No, I mean, I think, and if you go back through the Reddit chats, they've admitted all this week that they, um, they just made those up. They made a thousand bad Google reviews about me. It's like uh, those people, they really got something out for Anthony. And at this point in my life, I understand he had to do something to one of those guys. I mean, it's just nobody has that kind of hate. But to be fair, three hundred thousand dollars wouldn't cover our payroll for a week and a half. Um, so, and that's that was the total PPP loan over over two months' time. And just it had to, nothing to do with Anthony Fair or any of this. <clears throat> the PPP loan was, I think, a year and a half, two years prior, something like that. I mean, it was when COVID first hit. That that's when those things came out. Um, so, okay. I mean, it was. Maybe not a year and a half. It was at least a year before. But for me, this was I, – I go after everything myself. I mean, I, I started the business I run now, and I don't I don't feel comfortable putting – I think last year I had a few million dollars in savings um, and like a retirement plan. I'm not big on the 401Ks because you can't touch it until a certain age. And to be honest with you, I'm not on the 60-year retirement plan. Um, I made like 2.5%. That's, that's just crazy. So I was just going to pull that money out. I made a bunch of different investments. I mean, I've, we bought some real estate. We, we've done a bunch of stuff. I used some of that money um, here to buy some watches. Um, I was going to flip them. And to be fair, I mean, I've made more than two and a half percent. So, I mean, it's, it's a better right. than it's in the bank. It's a lot more stressful. Um, but it's also kind of pulled me away from my duties at our other business where I was just over consumed. It was day and night. All I could think about was that. So it's, it's helped me pull back a little bit. I just want to uh, address a few quick uh, chats here, Wesley, and then I, I got a question that I'd like to follow up with that. We got the Watch Lounge. This is Chris from Luxury Bazaar. Says, what's up, Wesley? We have, I believe we have a mutual contact. I won't mention names, but good to see you on here. We got Brian, who's on the panel, saying almost 700 watching. Actually, we have 746 right now, 126 upvotes. Smash the like button. And we got Mental Jock with 18 AED. Says, always amazing guest, JJ. The channel is a train hit that upvote button sometimes it's hard to understand mental jock he's from a different uh country <laughs> I'm like, we love our yeah. mental jock. he's scottish but, um, and from a different <laughs> but my my kind of my question is like with everything that happened um like i know you said you, you did you know make out and you know it was better than being two percent in the bank but with all that happened do you feel like um would it be best to that you avoided TPG, Anthony Farrow, whatever you want to call them, all together? Or do you think there were things you could have done differently where you both could have made quite a bit of money if there were maybe some checks and balances, um, you know, something like that? Or do you think he's just too far gone? Is he like – because I don't know him personally, and I, I feel like you got um, more um, interaction with him, a little more intimate interaction, especially, you know, over that period of time and, you know, that type of money being involved to really see what he's about. So I'm um, curious. At this point, I can say I think everybody that's been his path would be better off without him um, not having been around him. Um, that being said, the dude can sell watches. I mean, if there's nothing else he can do, he can do that. Um, he's a horrible business person. He probably sold a lot based on lies, and I don't know that stuff because whenever he sold to me, I told him what I wanted. He wasn't the best price. It was high, but it was it was it was fast. I could make it work, so I went with it. Um, yeah. Now, if I was with somebody else who had his platform, um, it would be a, a, a very, very, very strong business. There's really good dealers out there right now that if they had his social media following, they could do very, very good things. Um, and, I and think the, he was, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was saying the numbers he's turning, or he was turning, um, that were shown to me. And in the end, Z told me they were real numbers. Um, of course, he didn't know where the money went when it went in the bank. You know, his job was to sell and invoice and things like that. But I mean, they were making like some really good profit. Um, 
Right. We think he was in the, you know, he, he, not only did he have charisma and good YouTube presence, but he was in the right place at the right time as far as with COVID. So many eyes on YouTube. He blew up quick. I mean, he was really, he had it all going from it. It's just the money coming in. I don't think it was the issue. It was the money going out and the, you know, <laughs> maybe mishandling of it. You know, I don't know the intricacies of his business, but um, I think that was more of the issue, like not being able to handle it coming in, you know, so quick. Um, and I just want to say two things. First of all, thank you everyone who's gifting uh, all the memberships. Uh, I do see you guys. I appreciate that. And for those who are saying that, um, you know, Wesley's not a victim. Wesley's here to tell the story. You're more than welcome to ask questions in the chat. Um, before this, I did contact uh, Anthony directly as far as a direct message on Instagram and asked him if he would like to come on and tell his side of the story. Um, no response from him. So Wesley's here and we're going to hear him out. And that's what it is. If um, so, we've kind of we've touched on this cast of characters, right? There's Z, and there was obviously Darby and 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 Liz and whatnot. So I would like to know just again, this is one side of the story, and they've been invited. From your perspective, the other cast of characters, you you know, like you mentioned with Z, that he like he kind of knew some of it, but there were things he didn't know either. So from your perspective, how many people were potentially? complicit or from your perspective you're not sure if they were complicit but you would be shocked if they weren't um, um so and the truth is is that i did not know who uh was darby and um the girl liz, liz. So this week i'd never I, so i've never seen them in my life um i've never talked to them on the phone until this week i really didn't even know what their roles were there and i mean that may sound crazy but i really went through this thing for almost eight or nine months now and literally only talked to Anthony. I mean, that was it until the end when we had trouble. So I didn't talk to anybody else. Um, actually, I wouldn't even have Z's number, I don't think. If, if Anthony, when I asked about a payment, he said, hey, Z, Z will handle that. Here's his number. And then he said, well, you know, I think at that time he said, well, I got it handled. Don't worry about it. But then the next week when it came up, you know, I just called I called Z. Um, and he was very forthcoming. He was honest. And, um, I mean, to be fair – me and Z kind of worked together when we were, I think it's known, I considered helping Anthony whenever I realized the debt he was in. It didn't seem like it would be that hard to pay back, you know, the number he told me at that time. Um, and I could, I mean, anybody who's who's run a business like I do. What could, was that number? I, I mean, so it initially, I'll tell you, it started at a half million. It went up to a million. It went up to 1.8. And when I saw the 1.8 stuff, um, it didn't include myself. It didn't include three or four other people I knew about. Um, in the end, a week ago, two weeks ago, um, Anthony wanted me to see what we could do to work things out. Um, I don't know how to say it. I guess bail him out. Um, and and he wanted me to meet with Z and Travis. Um, I think Travis was just, uh, I think he's new to the watch business. But he's a really smart guy. I don't know his role or if he was even involved with Timepiece gentlemen, I really don't, but they flew out. Um, while they were on the plane, I was storming my brain. I was speaking with my attorneys about what I could do to possibly help. I, I knew with the things he's done, I wasn't going to be a, an investor, a part owner in that business. Um, I was going to have to find a way to do it from the outside if it was going to work. While Z and Travis were on that plane, um, they were supposed to you know, wire me a hundred grand when they landed for some stuff they did as part of what he owed me. I think Z had reached out when he landed. Anthony had sent him a text saying that um, he could use that hundred grand to pay somebody else off to keep quiet for another week um, until, you know, and, and anyway, Z reached out to me before he, he agreed to that. And when he found out it was a lie, I think that's when me and both me and him both just said, you know, this is enough. This guy's not going to change. Um, and we spent the better part of that conversation or that day and a half just going over how things happened. And, and, and you know, he was really giving me advice on, um, you know, if I wanted to do this stuff, you know, this is what you need to do. And it was it was kind of the opposite of what Anthony did. Um, and I don't think I could ever be as successful as Anthony portrayed that he was. I don't really know what his. Yeah, he what, know how to pull the lifestyle aspect of it off really well. For sure. Yeah, and, and truthfully, that's nothing that I care to do. Um, I make very right. good money. And um, 
I could live off a hundred grand a year. Like, I mean, we don't do anything. We just hang out with the kids and, and we enjoy stuff. But do you um, think Z was kind of more um like not aware of what was happening? Or do you think he was kind of in on this action too and maybe trying to play it up with you at that point to save some face? Because it was all kind of coming to a head at this point, I'm imagining. So I would say that again, I don't know Z. Um, I don't know any of his past. Mm. It, it's a name that's been very quiet. I'll tell you that it hasn't been buzzing around too much that I know. So I, I, mean. I think it's because he's from my from my dealings with him. He seems like a very genuine and honest guy. I can right. tell you when he landed and he found out the things that I knew. I'm positive that he just found out at that time because you can't hide that that shock. I mean, like his hands shaking, things like that. Um, right, right. And, and I could tell he was just really quiet in the corner. And 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 finally, I just asked him. You know, he was in there with um you know, my ops manager and my wife. And I said, you know, I asked him what was wrong. And he was just, he was playing. And he said, I got to get home. You know, I got to talk to Anthony. He's got to meet me at the bank and, you know, get my name off of, you know, anything there. Because I think Z could make, his name was on the bank account somehow. Maybe he could make deposits or something. I'm not sure. But he was, he was just out. And then the next day when he got home, he called me just to tell me, you know, he's not there. He, he's not involved. Um, you know, if I need something to reach out to him. But I, I would be very surprised if he was. But again, I can't, I can't really say either way because the only person I dealt with was Anthony. When I, just, I just want to touch on. Sorry, hang on one second. I'm sorry. Yeah. I just want to because I'm a little behind. I just want to get a couple of the chats and then I got a question from Curly. I, I want to ask. Um, thank you, Mossy. He says over 900 watching. Upvote. We have Kelly in the house on her own time. Says supporting the channel. Then we have Real World Curly with five dollars. He says Wesley is Bob the reason all this came to a head. Bob seems like the kind of stand-up man I would like to have a steak with. Again, thanks for the appearance. Um, the, the truth is I don't know that Bob would have found out when he did um, if I didn't do what I did. Um, so I found out first. I, and, and I've got messages. I don't want to get too many details. But, but Anthony sent out that text saying, hey, you know, I'm sorry. I made mistakes. I owe you money. I'm going to pay you back. I kind of told him that. Actually, you know, oh, actually I'm sorry. Yes, so, are you confirming Anthony really did send out that text? Yes, I, I'm, okay. I, I told him for me to help him at all, he had to come clean. Um, okay, all right. And, so, because and, and, we've all seen the text, but the, nobody, Anthony, ever confirmed he wrote it. Yeah. So it's actually right, right. interesting for me to hear yep. like firsthand that you actually are confirming that. Reading the verbiage on it, I would say somebody helped him write it um, because he don't talk like that. But um, it, I think it was it was seventy five percent factual. Um, I mean. You know, and I posted some stuff on Reddit this week just because they were coming at me so bad. But um, I see somebody says they're a victim of the uh, the TPG thing. Um, give them my contact. We the the lawyer that I'm working with out there. We're trying to help people um who can't afford. You know, just we're trying to help them get some help out there legally. Um, and we can also get them in touch with the right law enforcement. But in that text, he said that he had been robbed and lost some stuff. Um, well. It, that was all complete lie. And I, and I had texted him a few minutes after he sent that message and I told him I was proud that he <laughs> sent it, but I really wish he would have been honest completely instead of, you know, just making another excuse. Um, and it, for me, I've made a lot of mistakes in my life, but as soon as you just come clean about it all, no matter what people think, you can sleep at night. Um, and, and, and that's what I cared about. When's, when's the last time you've had any contact with him or his camp, any people in his camp? Um, I spoke with Anthony last Saturday morning, uh, would be the last time, um, which is the time that the things went crazy on, on Reddit. What was you talked to him via phone or text? Yeah. Um, you know, I don't want to lie. I'm not sure. Um, probably okay. both. So he, he reached out and, you know, meanwhile, he was not affiliated with me. When we found out what was going on, we sent another guy over um, to California. We met, uh, Malka, who's like an armored truck um to, to ship high valuable shipments yep. and we removed all of our inventory brought it home well anthony had a lot of photos of my inventory and he was still posting them um for sale and he was doing the same thing with bob's inventory and other stuff he had you know he was still posting those pictures well saturday morning he reached out and i had something i've been trying to sell and he wanted to, to sell it um and he had a client for it and you know at this point my attorney said you know you can't take a wire um from that account, you need to be done with it. And we agreed that, you know, <laughs> if we invoice his customer directly and they pay me directly, 
um, I would do that. And he agreed that the profits over my cost would go back towards paying me what he owed me. Um, so I agreed and I sent the customer an invoice. And I, I think um, one of the Reddit guys had set up a sting or whatever, and that's how it came about. But I mean, I think that's happened with a few other dealers this week as well. But at the end of the day, it was like a $70,000 watch. And when a guy owes me a million dollars, $70,000 makes you feel a lot better about things um, in, in the bank. Um, oh, yeah. I don't know that I did something wrong. You know, I was working directly with <clears throat> his client to pay me. There was there was no opportunity for anything to do anybody wrong. But I understand where everybody came from on it as well. So, I mean, I don't – I wish I wouldn't have done it, but I'm not going to lie about it. And we got Patel Philippe with the $5 uh, Super Chat. says, have a good show, boys. Uh, hope you're well. Ali, go ahead. I'm going to – because you got a question, and I'll, I'll follow you up because I have one as well. Yeah, so so he shows you a list of allegedly about $1.8 million. That doesn't include what he owes you. So what he owes you shifts from 500000 to a million. So that's part question – Part one of the question is how did it shift from roughly four hundred eighty thousand dollars to a million? So that's two point eight million. Then it also doesn't include some other money. So we're breaking three million. So we're getting closer to Anthony's alleged five million dollars, right? So the first part of that question is how did that you know uh, that jump for you from about four hundred eighty thousand to above a million, right? So um, yeah. So so just to answer one at a time because I don't want to get sidetracked. I think my inventory skew sheet that he did. So basically. We had a sheet with all of my inventory. When he sold it, it moved to another sheet. It showed my cost and then what he sold it for. And then some pieces I got 25% profit. Some pieces I got 50% profit. And so it had just a lump sum. I think that run in total was was close to 600 grand. And um, at that point, we went and removed all of our inventory. When we got our inventory back, there were some pieces missing, some really, really valuable stuff. Um, Anthony came clean. He needed to borrow some money from another dealer. I don't, I don't care to say their name. Um, he's a very good guy. The guy reached out to me personally to make sure that I could get my stuff back. Um, Anthony gave him four of my watches. Um, well, he said five, but in the end, four were mine. One was another guy um, who consigned it. And I wound up um, through the help of uh, a couple of people, I was able to get that watch back to the person who owned it this week. But he had gave him those to another dealer um, as collateral on a loan. And I think that guy gave him, you know, a little over $300,000. Anthony gave him $450,000 worth of my watches um, as collateral because I, for the guy to request collateral, I don't know if they've had a bad deal in the past or what it was, but. Um, so I'm sorry, was... like guy, like, was this a pawn shop? Was this like. No. Um, and I'm sorry. I'm, I saw somebody say, I got a little waterway right there on boat just rode by but um no it, it's not a pawn shop it's like a i guess he's probably somebody who's doing business with anthony in the past to have that relationship so just an individual yeah he is an individual he's not a big company he kind of dabbles in stuff uh, similar to me i don't think it's his full-time profession he but i mean he's a lot bigger name than i am um somebody that i would look up to and he um i guess he gave anthony some money anthony gave him those watches collateral um, this gentleman showed me text messages where he specifically asked um, Anthony before the deal happened, these are your watches, you know, you own these right out. And Anthony said, yes. Um, and then the guy sent him serial numbers to confirm and, and Anthony confirmed that they were his. I reached out to him and said, Hey, you know, here's the and deal. By confirmed. You mean he lied. Anthony lied to him and said he owned the watches that were indeed your watches. But, but yes, but for, for this gentleman, you know, he asked him two or three times over the series of the little transaction to just, I guess, to make sure he felt like he was doing the right thing. And for him to ask that, you know, he's probably had some rough stuff in the past. And come to find out, I, I think he had an issue somewhere along the line. But, um, again, I don't, I don't want to bring them up. They're, he, he's, at a, he's at a loss now, too, um, for how it all played out. So I got a question. Um, at any point throughout this, or in particularly towards the end when you started seeing, like, some, like, issues, I would say um, – did you ever reach out to his former partner, uh, maybe like Marco Nicolini, who's of Grand Caliber now, or any of his former associates to say like, hey, how does this guy do business? Why did you split up? Anything like that? Like, And did any anything lead you to believe like maybe they could give you some info of what's happening or, or did that not even like, happen I mean, at all? This crazy as this may sound to some people, um, 
I don't really get on the internet. I don't do, I mean, I literally did not have a Facebook account until I joined um, a couple of the groups to, to do watch stuff. So I really had no idea, honestly, until after we were really deep in that he even had a former uh, business partner. Um, I have since done ask a lot of questions and things like that. I haven't spoken to them directly. Um, but I spoke to somebody I think who works with uh, Marco and, um, from my understanding, him and Anthony are totally different people. But again, like I, I think they do business a lot different way. Um, but I, I don't know. I've never spoken to Marco. And uh, of course, I didn't reach out and ask him anything. Right. It, it kind of went zero to 100 with Anthony. Um, everything was good, good, good. And then real bad. I mean, 14 days, it was over. I mean, that, that's how it, that's how it played out. And right. I think in the end, I've come to realize and I don't know this. But when he was paying me on time, I, I think he was probably paying me with money from other stuff. You know what I mean? I don't it, it couldn't have just happened in, in two weeks. And he went downhill that fast. So I just I want to grab a couple of these real quick. Before shifting we, uh, money. Uh, Brian, let me let me just get these and then you go. Oh, oh we yeah. Got Perth in the house. Hey, Perth, two dollars. He wants a recap. Another media blackout, Perth. We're going to leave it. at that. <laughs> If you're not in the loop, it's probably too hard to explain. We got a question from PJ. He wants to know. Do you, I guess, do you know, what was Anthony doing in Florence, South Carolina six days ago? Uh, I'm not sure if you even know that, but. That yeah, no, he, I mean, so, and, and I, I think I made it really clear this week, and, and I say clear, I answered all the Reddit people because they were the one that were blowing me up. But, um, again, he owed me a million dollars. Um, he flew here. We, we, were, we were talking about how, I think, how we were going to pay things back. We had a little deadline on when things were going to happen. Um, you know, he kind of knew that me and Bob had talked, and, um, Bob called me the night he found out and we talked for a little while. And I mean, to be honest with you at that time, Bob was trying to find a way to, to help Anthony as well, to pay some of these people back because we thought it was such a smaller number. Um, in the end, Bob woke up the next day and he was, he was done and he was, you know, he, he was decided he was going after Anthony. Um, I was a little bit more reserved. I was owed about four to five times more money. But anyway, Anthony came to the office. Um, he, he met with uh, my operations manager over my other business they talked about plans, how we could pay, you know, how he could work to pay me back. I even considered a deal with Anthony where um, he would sell my inventory and then 100% of the profits would go to pay back the people he owed um, and, and our agreement. And it's all in writing. And I've shared it through the Reddit crowd this week. But I would be the very last person to get paid back out of all that. So I would not benefit anything until everybody else was done. Um, just felt like the right thing to do. I, I felt... I don't know. I just, I feel more bad for all the other victims. I've, I've heard from so many people. There's people who've really lost everything over this deal. Um, I know of a, a pregnant woman who's eight or nine months pregnant. I mean, it's just bad. They're, they're, they're losing everything. Um, and we're doing everything we can to help them. I just, I do want I, to note something and then, and follow up with a question. So we did some due diligence and this should not come as a surprise to Wesley, especially since he's been, he's been involved with Reddit folks recently. We did do some due diligence that included reaching out to some long standing folks on the Reddit subreddits that have been following Anthony and have issues with Anthony and a number of the gray market dealers. Uh, the people that I spoke to, which I could do some amount of repudiation of their identity, obviously it's Reddit, all agreed that in their interactions this past week with Wesley, since they, Pretty much like they just went, as Wesley said, completely after him. They all agree that Wesley is not, um, and I'm not trying to insult you, Wesley. I apologize. Not internet savvy. This is all new territory for him. So yeah. like registering the Reddit account and various things that that were done uh, uh, were all new territory for him. So I think that that question that keeps coming up in the chat, um, do we have reason to believe that Wesley's not lying? A lot of people uh, tend to agree right. that, that that Wesley is this is new territory uh, uh, for him. That's not you know what he right. spends his time on. Now, with that said, I do want to touch base on something because it caught my ear. You, he was in Florence, South Carolina. You said a week ago. You also answered Brian earlier when Brian asked when the last time you spoke to him was about a week ago. So was the last time you spoke to him basically right after he met with your operations manager? Yeah. So um. He flew in Thursday, um, Thursday afternoon sometime. I met with him for 30 minutes myself um, last week uh, uh, of summer before my kids go to school. So we were leaving to go out of town the following morning um, to the beach. Uh, me and my wife and kids, we did. We, um, somebody asked me to wipe my camera off. I think it's just, I no, think they're it's just messing with you because of the lights behind you. Yeah, they're messing yeah, with you. They're just messing I with flipped, you. I flipped a bunch of them, but um, <laughs> yeah, so I met with him 
I don't know, I'd have to say 30 minutes hour at the most on Thursday. We went over some things, but the general plan was him and Jason were going to sit down Friday, crunch the numbers. I mean, either you're paying me back or I got to go after you as hard as I can. Um, that did not mean publicly at all. I just, I feel bad that I had to do it that way. But honestly, Saturday morning, I woke up, it was him or me. And at, at the end of the day, I've really not done much wrong. I mean, I was involved with somebody. If you want to say uh, guilty by association, then maybe. But um, you'll never meet somebody in your life that said I did them wrong purposely. Um, it's just Well, let me ask you that question, yeah. right? You just said you don't feel like you did much wrong. Yeah. You know, people are going to – they have said a ton of things about you this past week. What do you feel that you did wrong in the situation? Um, <laughs> I, I mean, so for me to say that, I, I think the only thing to say is I'm guilty by – association and I hold myself very accountable but I was a very bad judge of character if that's doing something wrong I mean I, I should have done a lot more due yeah. diligence before putting such an investment into somebody but um you know I never sold a watch to anybody um you know outside of my little groups I never sold through Anthony I I wouldn't I'm not involved in any of that you were um, never financier you were never involved in so so because and the reason I ask that and again people are not nobody's ever going to be happy with how we ask questions or what questions we ask but we've addressed the ppp loan for people who keep bringing it up and whatnot but the reason i ask that is that wesley as far as i can tell because people like z and folks have disappeared and everybody may have very good reason to disappear some people have legal reasons their accounts whatever wesley during the past week has not denied on reddit the i the accounts that have been identified as him and has provided information and has not run from anything like overtly right um that doesn't mean anybody's gonna be satisfied with answers to questions and and you know from my perspective i've actually said it actually on air i don't look at people who were getting involved in buying those type of watches as uh innocent parties i honestly don't on the flip side when i asked earlier if you could afford to buy 30 or 40 watches before you did any of this it's actually i mean it's clearly evidently true that you didn't need the money so this wasn't like you were the type of person who was trying to do the Lambos and sushi thing. You could already afford the Lambos and sushi if you wanted it. It's just not who you are. No, I mean, the truth is, is everybody says this is crazy money. Um, I could just sell everything I got now and just buy a big ass boat. I mean, it's, it's, it's literally money who doesn't affect my family. It's, it's my, it's our future. Our, our yeah, savings. it's like you said, yeah. I mean, really, it's just pulling money away from an investment account that was, after taxes was making me less than 2% to um, just something I had more control of. And that's, that's the way I've run my life. If I win or lose, um, if I'm in control, I'm happy. And, and I've had good success with that. So I just want to grab a couple of these chats because uh, I'm a little behind on them. And we would like to show a little love to our supporters. I'm going to grab we got, Sure. We've got 1,400 strong. So, uh, by the way, I want to shout out Bubba, Hotep, Big Sal, everybody who's given all the memberships. Uh, really appreciate that. We got Camel Toe. Perfect time to bring this one up while Wesley's gone. Uh, he says a little uh, bit for uh, Mo, JJ, and Ali. And mad respect for Wesley for the appearance tonight. Thank you, Zeppi. We do appreciate that. Perth he says, I shall slowly pay back my out-of-the-loop debts. Yep, that's about accurate. There you go. Yeah. Can I pull up some comments uh, before we get to the next, the last? Super? No, no, go ahead. Get to the last. I just want to get Patel here. Philippe, Land, yeah. Lambos, and Sushi forever. Thank you, Patel Philippe. Appreciate your support. And when Wes gets back, I want to ask uh, Art's question. So did you have something else you wanted to pull up? There was a question. I wanted to answer some questions real quick because people seem to have comprehension issues. All right. Um, give them a quick rundown, and then I'll pull up Art's for uh, Wesley. to give them Yeah, so so the people who keep asking, does Wesley know about anything? He's, he's, he's answered that question. Go back and watch it again. We're not gonna we're not gonna do that. Whether you spam the comment over and over and over again, people right. keep asking about PPP. He's answered the question. We're not gonna go back to it over and over and over again. Um, the 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 we want to be respectful. We're asking the questions you want, but if you don't, if you're not yeah. respectful, we're not gonna we're not gonna bother to ask them over and over and over again. Yeah, and I mean, I'll be clear. Like, ask whatever you want. I mean, honestly, the only thing I don't want to talk about is um the facts to their investigation on um, anything about me personally, you know, bring it on. I'm a, I'm a tough guy. And I, I again, I've got nothing to hide. So just, I'm uh, just saying, I want to tell the, yeah. the audience members that we're not going to ask the question again. If it's been asked right, right. once we clarified, we're not going to do it over and over again. Yeah, we're not going to keep badgering, badgering the same question. Right. Yeah. So thank you. Basil's bezels for $2 super chat. He says principle is something to fight for big night. 
Yeah, thank you, Bezel. Appreciate your support. Now, Art has a question. Art Vandalay with the five dollar super chat says, "Have you learned through attorneys or law enforcement if Anthony has potentially committed any crime?" I think this is a good question because you see so many people speculating, right? But nobody's actually in law enforcement. So, like, I always take the position of. I'm not going to accuse anyone of a particular pr crime because that's not my field, right? So I, I can't say that without, you know, what, I don't know that for a fact. So I'm curious what you've heard. Yeah, real fast. Um, Camoto needs to reach out to me if he's making 22%. I'll be out of this business fast. <laughs> no, um, a billionaire. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so, um, I mean, have they said, yeah, he's committed a crime? No. Um, I, people after him that I don't want after me. Um, I mean, I just – Law enforcement is is really really heavy on it, and um, I I mean I don't know how to say that, but um, I mean I think he's fucked. Is that I means what I say? I don't I don't know how you could ever come back from it. Um, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a law enforcement guy, but I mean, in my opinion, he stole directly from a lot of people with intent. He knew what he was doing. Um, he stole from this guy to pay that guy. Um, in the end, I was the last person, so I got left holding the biggest bag. You know, if it would have went on for another six months, then maybe I'd have been made whole and it'd been somebody else. Right. Wes, I, I, Wes, Wesley, I'm sorry. I, I got a quick question. So the, the persona that we see on you, like YouTube, the Anthony Farah that we see, is he is he that person, that YouTube person, or is he a lot different when you actually interact with him? Question. Um, so I've only met him in my life one time. Um, that's when he came here a few weeks ago. Uh, well, twice. He came here a long time ago um, to deliver some watches. When he came that time, he was very humble, but I was a guy who just in the last two or three months spent a million dollars with him. Um, when he came this time, he was humble, but whenever he met with my my ops manager who, who flew there to see him once before I put any inventory in the store just to kind of lay out some ground rules. Um, and then a lot of times on the phone, I mean, I mean, he was kind of a cocky and arrogant guy, but like I get that sometimes. And, and I tell you that I don't feel I'm cocky, arrogant at all. I'm just um, maybe I'm confident, and, and I really just vibed with him that way. I assumed that you know that's what it was. Um, I'd never seen any YouTube videos. I learned since um, <clears throat> since I since all this went down that he had a YouTube channel, but I think it played the same thing as the uh, the TikToks did. So I just I mean I probably watched every one of his um his uh, things on TikTok. Cause that's the thing yeah. I'm trying to figure out is that if he, he had, cause you said that, you know, I, I, I'm going back. You said, you know, I, I, I met him. I probably could have done better due diligence and looking him up. Did you feel that he might've just kind of captivated you with, with kind of everything he was spitting at you? And you said, well, you know, this guy seems pretty trustworthy. I should just go in this direction. I mean, I was in all, I mean, if you watch his TikTok videos and again, who bases somebody's business transaction off TikTok video? I mean, that's dumb. I did yeah. it, but yeah. I mean, he was selling to celebrities. He was doing this, that, and the other. I mean, hell, I didn't know that he owed more money on all the cars that they were worth. I just sure. assumed this guy's got all this much. And this penthouse that I learned he never even moved into now. But um, I, mean, I thought that's where the guy lived. And, I mean, to do that, I mean, you got to come from wealth. Or you got to be successful at something. And, um, mm -hmm. again, if I'd have done any amount of research, it, it would have been clear and I would never have been here. But um, mm -hmm. you learn from yeah. something. And, and I've, I've met a lot of great people through this thing. Um. You know, I'll tell you this week, I'd never met um, uh, Trevor. I think his name's Trevor. Um, he reached out this week, and I guess he's got a lot of clients um, that uh, I think he's trying to help now. They're reaching out to him because they don't get Anthony, and he actually got me in contact with the guy who uh, who owned the, um, the the watch that I got back from the, the gentleman who did the loan. And he gave me the guy's number, and I reached out to him, and the guy knew the – the serial number. He had his original purchase receipt and with his name and everything on there. And and I think, I mean, in my opinion, I don't know Trevor, but I think he did a lot of good things. Like, I mean, I know he's come out of, out of his own pocket to, to make things right for a lot of people. Um, I know Z has come out of his pocket to, to help, you know, from my understanding, everybody I've talked to, Z's got a very good name in the, in the small little watch industry. Um, and, you know, he's very close with a lot of Asian people. And um, in, in my opinion, I've, I've never met anybody that I valued um, that, that said a negative thing about him. Um, and I know he's done a lot. Um, and then a lot of people who, who kind of came to my 
to my side, which are some in the watch business and, and just some that I've never met, but they, I mean, I don't think it's hard to recognize when somebody is, is trying to tell you whatever you want and be honest. I might not have the answers you want, but I'm going to tell you the truth. Now, I just want to get to some use, uh, some uh, people in the chat's comments and some questions. I'm going to uh, move around a little bit. By the way, thank you, Ali, for 50 memberships. and Everybody else, Lone Star, giving 20 memberships. And someone else just gave five. You guys are great. So Eric D says, Wes, thanks so much for sharing. I know it took a lot on your end to share. Thanks for doing the right thing. Thank you, Eric D. I appreciate that. Then we have first Alpha Zulu says, Wesley, I've said this multiple times in Reddit. You are a stand-up man. Thank you for coming forward and going above and beyond to help everyone else. I appreciate your kindness. And then we have APR TV says, in the end, was it worth the loss of money or the inter internet feedback? What was the hardest part of this? Hell, man. Um, it wasn't worth the last week, to be honest with you. Um, I didn't know what I was signing up for. And I'm the person who sees stuff through. So I'm going um, to keep doing it. I mean, I, I've got a full-time job. This is something I did, you know, after hours when the kids were asleep and, and things like that. But, you know, I don't intend to to stop. I mean, I do good business. I mean, I haven't made any money, um, if that makes any sense. I've, uh, mm -hmm. in the deals I've done, I make, you know, a couple percent. So it's not, it's not great, but it's just something I enjoy doing. So, I mean, for that reason, I'm, I'm still with yeah. it. I got you. I'm just going to breeze through a few more of these because they're quite a bit here. P. Clint says, it amazes me how many experienced business people in the U.S. have pro provided investment without doing an adequate amount of due diligence. It happens sometimes. Uh, Golden Baba with the $20 Super Chat says, JJ and panel, absolutely professional class in the land of snakes. I don't even collect anymore, but I had to stay locked in. Thank you, Golden Baba. Appreciate your support. We have Omar in the house. $5 Super Chat says, happy to see you killing it, JJ. Great show as usual. Thank you, Omar. Appreciate your support. And uh, PJ says, be careful of Trevor Wesley. Okay, a little advice from PJ. Maybe he knows something. And let's move on to a little bit of a light question for you, Wesley, just to take a break from all the uh, questions. We have Neo with $2 Super Chat says, Wesley, three watches you genuinely love. Um, so this uh, two-tone sub it's really cheap, but it's got a lot of sentimental value, value with my, my dad and all. Um, and then I'm a huge fan of the, the meteorites. Um, I, I probably own all of the, the Daytona GMTs and the day date and the meteorites. And um, I own several of all of them because I intend to keep one, you know, kind of forever for of all of them. And then I just like the history behind them. All of them are different. And that's kind of really what got me into this was, was seeing some of those. And I just want to pull up P cars 1970. Thank you for the super sticker. So I have two questions I want to ask. Um, my first one is, I know you mentioned Reddit a lot and I, I feel like it's something that would bother you. I don't know if it does or not, but you know, about all like really bad things people are saying, what would you say do you think was one of like the worst things you heard that's like not true or anything you want to address specifically that wasn't true. That was like a really nasty rumor floating around just to clear that. Oh, for anyone, is there anything we haven't covered in particular? If not, that's fine too. I'm just curious if we're missing anything that you know really like was a nasty rumor on Reddit that is not true, and you'd like to clarify for anyone about myself, right? Like were people saying anything nasty about you on there that you know we haven't covered, or anything any issue you want to say like, hey, this is not what happened. It's you know, I mean, I mean just to be honest, um, I'd say 99 percent of it wasn't. <laughs> um, but I will say that after talking to them and being honest, I think the majority of them turned around and they realized it. But um, I mean, I've never stolen from anybody. I've, I've never been aware of it. Right. When I was made aware of it, I forced him to come out and, and, and come clean and, and tell the truth. Um, he did it. I made sure he let all of his victims know he owed him money. Um, I then made, you know, I tried my best to work with him and, and I made it where, you know, if we were going to do it, he wasn't going to make any money besides enough to uh, to eat and sleep until he paid everybody back. Um, and on top of that, I was going to be the last person to get paid back in the end. So right. it don't make me better than anybody else. But I mean, I, I just I, I want to see the best for everybody. Um, and, and, you know, there, there was the, the, you know, the day five video, right? I don't know if you followed on YouTube, you know, every day he was doing videos. Day five video gets deleted, right? But it turns out, I know Brian had saved the footage, thankfully. And, he, you know, Brian's a good man. He was able to show me what was what. I think he actually did a video on it. If anyone wants to check that out after the stream, check out Brian's uh, channel. Let's Talk Live podcast. 
we could drop the link at some point. But um, how did you feel about Anthony, uh, you know, basically calling you out where he alleges that you conned him uh, in the deleted video? <clears throat> I think that's what a, a narcissist does. I mean, just I mean, I'm telling you, I've met the guy face to face and that's not something he would ever say, you know, directly to me or anybody else for that matter. Um, I've seen some of the videos where he gets mad at people, but that's not real life. And um, you don't do that to people where I'm at. Um, I just, I don't know what to say about that. I mean, he, I think he said the same thing about Bob. Um, you know, we could afford to lose the money. So we were, it was our fault that he couldn't pay everybody else back. Um, right. And it's just yeah, victim, victim mentality. But I'm, I'm just curious, like for the record, do you want to say like, I didn't con him? Like, so people know like, Hey, the guy actually said that he didn't avoid it. If not, that's fine too. I'm just, you know, I mean, I, I think that's what he said. I got mad and cut it off, but I've been sent a bunch of clips. Um, I, I, I literally almost begged the guy to work his ass off and, and pay everybody back and make it right. Um, and I think let the investigation through the law enforcement uh, get done, and I think we'll be able to share a lot more. But it's, it's very, very black and white. I'm not just saying things. Um, I talked to him almost exclusively through text messages because – it's just it's better that way in my opinion we've got records um i mean it, it's the guy really had nothing to offer me at all is what i'd say i mean okay i i made a few connections in the business um i think that's about it i mean things i could have done through anybody else that's fine all right we're gonna, i just want to get through a few more of these we have our friend hideki he says $25 super chat. Thank you very much for the generous super chat, Hideki. He says, do not ever try to earn respect of the internet like Reddit or Twitter. It's a losing cause. Just do what's right and sleep well at night while people scream into the black void of the internet, loneliness, and fake friends. I agree. Very good. Very well put, Hideki. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'd like to have that. Yeah. Um, I'd have loved to have done that, but um, that same mm -hmm. crowd is the one who made you know hundreds and hundreds of fake claims about me and, and reviews on our other businesses and and we're blowing up the mods to other things and chats and just, it, it really just turned my, my whole life upside down in, in 48 hours over the weekend. And at that point I thought about it hard and it was, I mean, it was him or me. And I just, I mean, just, I'm not yeah. going to keep sticking up for a guy like that. So I did what I had to do. Understood. And we have lost spring ball with $5 says clarification Were the $1 million in watches originally from Anthony Farah and consigned back essentially as an investment or from elsewhere and then consigned? No, so the $1 million, um, was really what I had purchased through him. I mean, not all at one time when he made that delivery. Um, i say probably half of them were at that time, but the other ones were in the few months before. All of those I still have. Um, those were like things that I really wanted and I was going to collect. And um, yeah, I, I, those weren't part of any of the consignment I sent to him. Okay. And James wants to know uh, – what did Anthony say about Darby and Liz? For the most part, he just had to explain to me why he let some people go because he was wanting me to invest in his business in some way. And he just said that for the most part that they weren't, they weren't valuable. Um, and then in the end, he told me that um, when he gave me his debt list, you know, he said, you know, they were on there. He owed them some money. And when I just asked him, um, and I posted the photos on Reddit, but he just, he responded that he had to pay them to be quiet. Um, I didn't really dig into a lot of details um, at this he point. He responded that he had to pay them to be quiet. Yeah, the, the, the exact words oh. are on one of the Reddit threads, but it's something along those lines. He had to pay them to, to be quiet or to, to keep hush or whatever he said. But, again, um, that's Anthony alleging it. I don't, you know, I just care. And again, I know no facts to that. Yeah, um, exactly. It's just it's an it's allegation just, from Anthony. Just what you've heard, right? Um, yes. Wesley, real quick, if I can ask you another quick, quick follow up. Um, you talked about before when you said that, you know, when all this shit kind of hit the fan, you know, people were kind of coming out and saying, well, you know, they were trying to figure out if they were going to help them or not, you know, help give them some money to kind of try to take care of this. And you said it just kept adding up and adding up. Do you think that's part of like his personality and his charm? Is that how he kind of hooks people in and, and kind of makes them feel bad for, for him and you know, I, that's what I'm just trying to understand a little bit more about him. That's why I kind of asked you, like, before, you know, what we're seeing on YouTube, is that how he is in person or is he, you know, more charming and kind of hooks you in a lot more? I think I think it's just my personality where I, I, I want to help people is what sure. got me. I'd say 99 percent of the other people um, 
um, wouldn't do that. Not because they don't want to help people. My, my wife would help anybody. She mm-hmm. said he was a piece of shit from the first day we met. Um, <laughs> and I just, she had a different read on him than I did. Um, and, and, you know, at the end of the day, she tells me she was right, you know, at least a couple times a day now. But um, yeah. I, I really thought, I, I was really just I, trying I, to help somebody. A married man whose wife says she's <laughs> right. I don't think, it, I don't, honestly, I don't think it required the TPG controversy for her to remind you that she's right. I just want to get through a few more questions here, guys, and then I want to give uh, Ali the opportunity to ask a question. I just, you know, I, I, the viewers are, you know, really uh, trying to get their questions in here, so I do want to pull them up. We'll go through them. You know, we'll give them some brief responses. We got <coughs> Loose Tooth with the $5 chat. He says, Wesley, thanks for coming on. What was the story about TPG video where he delivered $1 million in watches? Video seemed contrived. Um, so basically, I think he had to deliver like a half a million dollars and watches at that time, um, which is only like four or five. I think they were just some really big ones that I've been thinking about for a long time, and I pulled the trigger on them. I think the reason he came in person was I went back through text, and I didn't catch it at the time, but he didn't have a Malka account. Um, and I think the most he could ship through like uh, some of those pe- the, some of the other companies was like a hundred grand, one hundred fifty grand a day, maybe. And he just, I think for him, instead of setting up the Malka account, the armor truck, which was at that time, he told me it was six or seven thousand dollars. Which now that I've done it, I paid much, much, much less. Um, but I think he, I think he thought he delivered them to save some money. Um, and and I think also he wanted to get a lot of credit for a, a YouTube video or a TikTok video, whatever it was. Right. <laughs> All right. And we got P. Clen with the five dollars super chat says, "Did TVG ever tell you what he spent your money on? If yes, what was it?" Yeah, he, he said that he had to spend it to pay off other consignees to keep them quiet because they were they were going to come forward. So right. I don't know how far back it goes, but if he was taking my money to pay somebody else who was already coming out, in my opinion, he must have already put them off as long as he could. Gotcha. And Bubba Hotep with the $5 chat says, what does Wesley think about the Daytona that TPG confiscated? I, I really don't know anything about it. I've seen the video, but it's just like one I'd, I'd skip by. I mean – I, the, what I've seen of it, I don't, I don't know who he is to do that. Um, you know what I mean? It's, it is right. what it is. <laughs> I thought that was kind of ridiculous, too. And we got Joseph Frusky with a $20 Super Chat. He says, for your information, I'm in Staten Island. That's in New York, for any of those who don't know, where a watch dealer was the target of a robbery, in quotes, which is alleged to have been an inside job by him. This dealer also appeared in TPG when Anthony came to Staten Island, food for thought. Uh, I mean, look, I, I kind of, I, I, I just want to say something with it. Cause I, I, I'm kind of a little, not close to the situation, but I know who he's talking about. I personally don't think it was an inside job. I think that's a lot of nonsense. Um, that guy's a really nice guy and the dealer and, you know, he, of course he's going to be on TPG if he can, you know, because it's YouTube. Um, again, I'm not saying he, he did or didn't, I don't know him that well, but he seems like a nice guy. And I really don't think, uh, I don't think he was in on it, but hey, what are, you know, what do we know for sure? I don't know if you want to chime in on this, Wesley, if you even know what he's talking about, but uh, I'm, I don't, and I know some of the dealers in New York, but um, I know it's a dangerous business to be in. I mean, you know, a, a, a wrist with a Rolex on it could be a lot more valuable than a, a handful of cash in some cases. So, um, right. I, and I like Joe's not great guy. I'm not trying to. You know this. You know, like say, you know, go against him on here. I just, I have my own opinions on this. I think the guy's biggest criticism is that he didn't have a big enough safe for the watches he had there that got that got robbed. The guy he's talking about. So, so yeah, and, and I've, I've I've been through the whole insurance thing, and they're very strict on what you have to have. So, um, I mean, yeah. I think there's guidelines in place for that stuff. But I, I mean, I hope everybody's okay. I mean, in the, the day, money can be replaced um, as long as everybody's good. That's what. That's yeah, what it happened, happened at night. It happened overnight. There was nobody in there. They just they stole his safe full of watches. There's video on it, so it was all over the internet. But uh, we have APR TV with a five dollar chat said, "Did he ever mention sales tax debt?" That's a good point because in a lot of videos where he figures uh his figures, you know, he's like, "I'll make this much over this amount of time to pay back the five million. Never really taken into consideration of uh, income tax. I know a lot of people have had that question. So um, no, and to be honest with you, I, I don't. I've heard a lot about sales tax. I've never done like a, a retail transaction, and so anything I have sold through groups, I've got a retail license, and and they've got one, so it's just a, a dealer to dealer thing. But right, B2B. Um, I don't. I mean, no, he never mentioned it. I know me and Z has some talk about some uh, some tax issues with Anthony, and I, I mean, it's not sales tax related, and I don't. 
I don't want to bring it up. I mean, he, he had other issues. Okay, fair enough. And Brendan Meadows with five dollars says, "My wife saved me twenty six thousand with Anthony." So Wesley, God bless our wives. Cheers, Brenton. Tengambalanga, Northeast Victoria, Australia. Thank you, Brenton. Appreciate that. See, Wesley, you got people tuning in from all over the globe tonight. That everyone's interested in this story. All right, so I'm going to pass it over to Ali because he's been patiently waiting, and I know he's got questions. So. And I actually, I'm going to give Brian an opportunity first because I'm okay. going to be domineering. No, no I'm good. No, I'm, I'm, so, I got all my questions. So you said, <laughs> yeah. you know, you you this started with a TikTok late at night, and it was kind of a spur of the moment thing. Obviously, you regret that now. You wanted more than a 2% return. So there was a financial motivator. You're not denying that. But it wasn't also like a Lambos and Sushi financial motivator. Okay, so you do this. You now have the situation. And, you know, uh, uh, I'm a Florida boy. Um you're a bit of a good old boy. You've never denied that, right? And you want to set right by people, and you're a family man. Even before the show, you were saying goodnight to your family and stuff like that. And and people on Reddit even this past week said it turns out he actually, like, you know, he cares for his daughter and stuff like that. Like, he's just a family dude. Cool dude, right? Here's the problem, just, is that you clearly actually are very well business-minded because you made some critical decisions to avoid investment, Right. Yeah. You clearly know that there were things that didn't quite add up, right? Um, and now, I understand you say the sentiment is, I want to do what's right by the people and help everybody out. But is legal counsel advising you on that? Because there's another situation that you wouldn't be familiar with, with a gentleman named Stefano Della Costa, a much smaller situation. Similar conditions at a scale that is one-tenth of the scale of TPG. And people wanted to do right by the victims but in the process they got embroiled in more legal controversy right so i'm curious is legal counsel advising you to try to do right by the victims and again since it is a legal matter you don't have to answer it i don't want you to breach any attorney client privilege anything like that well so i'm not a part of like any criminal uh, investigation so i mean no my they haven't um and to be honest with you it's probably not something i would i would seek um their advice on i mean at the end of the day if, if i got to pay some more money out of pocket or something because of it then it is what it is but i think it's the right thing to do and it's just it's that simple to me i mean our business and our organization donates a lot of money every year um i, I mean i really just want to help people i mean it's just mm -hmm. i feel bad for them and if i hadn't heard their stories i wouldn't but you know i'm the guy who you know i see somebody struggling on the side of the road i, I pull over and offer them a job you know i just I do what I but can you do. do know, I mean, you do know there is also the risk of a lot of these people will try to, they will try to claim victimhood and try to scam you out of money because you want to be a good heart. Or a lot of people are going to try to implicate you on tax issues. As you've seen, you've been, you've been, based on your answer earlier, falsely accused of PPP loan fraud, right? Well, two parts of that. One, um, I'm not giving anybody money personally. It, it's all going through a legal, you know, I'm not. Okay, so there is a legal instrument involved. I'm not offering them cash to help them out. I'm offering them to help cover some retainer fees for them to get the right counsel. That's all I'm doing. I see what you're saying. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, it just, I know some of these people really lost 90% of what they have in this deal. I mean, they may have 50 grand in the bank and they just lost 48 of it. They can't afford to drop a, I mean, a retainer on so this. So that's really thing. interesting. So you're offering kind of like an informal legal fund for victims who can verify that they're victims because you have some of the information like from the books that Anthony handed to you. I do. And, and, and a lot of people are just, you know, they, it's really hard to get in touch with the right law enforcement on this deal. Um, I mean, that's the truth. I, I probably made 10 phone calls before I got the right people. Um, and if it wasn't for Bob, I never would have got him. I don't believe, but Bob somehow made it happen. And now we're all working with the same people, but just to get an attorney to dig into the things, you know, the law is going after him criminally, but I don't know they're going to be able to help. I don't know how they'll help recover some of these people's uh, um, what they've lost. So the attorney that I have helping is just simply there to, for the inv investigative side to to try to help you know help these families figure out if money's back. available to, to to pull back. Yeah, yeah so, so they can't afford the retainer. A lot of them. So I just put a, a I've offered my attorney a big pool of money. Um, if somebody comes forward, they need help. He will talk to them. If he feels like he can help them, then then I'll assist with some of the fees on that. But that's as far as I'm going. Okay. And then as did far any, as the did any of these people, I'm just curious. Like, you know, I know you had mentioned you obviously had spoken to an attorney and set up where people can contact them and see if 
you know, they can recoup money or whatever. And, you know, you and Bob had to reach out to certain authorities and it took a while to figure that all, get that into place. With all that going on, I know the one thing people keep going back to in the big debate, and I think we kind of touched on this a little before, but we didn't really know for sure. Did any anyone with like any credentials or any like anyone who could give you a solid and I'm not saying a matter of fact, but a solid guesstimate, like would this be considered uh, just a civil matter or would it be both criminal and civil matter? Has anyone actually like um, confirmed that it's a possibility at least? for uh both or either again i'm not rooting for anyone to go to prison i just want to make that clear i'm a this you know i don't have a a, a any skin in the game here i'm just curious and a lot of people are asking that question over and over have you heard from any professionals lawyers law enforcement that this is mainly civil or it could be both civil and criminal um so my attorney has told me that it, it is both um and then the people that i've spoken with recently in law enforcement um I know they're solely going after him criminally. So I don't know that they've actually got charges or if they're investigating to build that case. I'm not sure, but I know they've got, um, I've seen people go away for a lot less. I mean, I just, I, I know everything that I've, I've simply handed them um, on top of, in my opinion, I guess I'm not an expert, but at least a right. hundred online confessions and videos and, and everything else. I just, I mean, I, the reason I ask is because so many people online, I don't want to be lumped in with the same, like so many people on YouTube or, you know, other channels and stuff speculate and say these things uh, that might not be outlandish, but like that they don't have the, you know, the, the credentials to say, like they don't have the expertise to say. So that's why I was curious if you've actually heard it from an attorney. So it's good to get that part out there. I just want to pull up two things for you here. We got P. Clinton. Five dollars. He says, "Did TPG ever admit to using your client funds to support his uh, alleged alcohol, cocaine, and hooker habits?" Actually, I don't know if that's alleged because I think he's kind of admitted he's that. Come so. out and said it. Right, yeah. Right. So, so no, he told me he was uh, sober until the night he came out a few weeks ago and said he owed people all the money. Right. And I think he said you. You actually said before that he used your funds to pay people back pre that he owed money from previous transactions. Yeah, if I, if I got that right. And then we have Bubba Hotep with $5. He says, odds are near 100% that Anthony is watching right now. What is your message to him? Uh, call in. I mean, fair, simple as that. Enough. You gave him a link, call in. And Wesley, for the record, you're not helping him now in any monetary way, and you're not in the future planning on helping him in any monetary way. Okay. No, he um, – once I blocked him and – People came at me, and he came at me the way he did. Um, and I did what I did on, on the internet the other day. I blocked him because I just didn't need any more to deal with him. He sent a bunch of threats to the guy at my office that he'd been working with um, towards me. And What were the threats? I just, I, you know, I don't know. Um, give me a second. Let me read it. I don't want to. Misspeak. Anything you're not comfortable with, you know. Yeah, you don't, don't want to put. You don't have to disclose if you don't want. To. Well, no, no, it's on Reddit. So if I say something that's not exact, then then it'll <laughs> right. Come out. yeah, right. <laughs> While you we pull that up, it. I'm just going to pull up this question here from APR TV. Five dollars says, "Did the authorities <laughs> ask about content found on his social media?" I mean, we'll get to that after um, we get. No, but but the authorities did tell me that they were kind of reading all the i wanted to be honest with them and we spoke as recently as the day that um they have watched all the social media stuff they see the videos before they're taken they down do. um and, and and they've read every reddit you know there is and it is but anyway i've got the text message he 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 sure. told the guy in my office um i'll never understand why people i owe money go on social media and use everything they can to try to publicly ruin me and any chance i've got to ever making money I don't understand that, but I do understand their true character. I guess it's questioning my character because I, I told on him. Um, you always play the victim. <laughs> he made mistakes and he owned up to it. He's willing to do anything he pays debts back. Um, tell Wesley thanks for um, making it that much harder for me to pay everybody back. Um, I'm still going to pay him back, but I never want to hear a fucking word from you again. Um, feel free to come and visit me in person. He gives me his address. He's not and hiding from anybody. Tell Wes I hope he got what he wanted. But ironically, when Jason dropped him off at the Starbucks at the airport, he said he was going to Dallas because he didn't want to go home because people knew where he lived. 
And for the record, Wesley did say, if you want to call in, um, hey, I messaged you, uh, Anthony, before. I had asked you if you wanted to tell your side of the story. Uh, you got my Instagram. You could shoot me a message if you want. <laughs> you know, that's up to you. Yeah, Obviously. And I should, uh, I should know while we're waiting maybe for Anthony to, to respond per Wesley's invitation. Uh, Wesley, you are obviously here uh, voluntarily. You're not. We're not law enforcement uh, court judge. So you, we did see you before the show. You were wishing good night to your family and stuff. So if there's like a you know ten minute warning sort of thing, please feel free to tell us. We do not want to disrupt your life any further than has obviously already been rocked. Yeah. Right. We super right. appreciate it. I personally found this really enlightening. I came to this. I said it on air that I just don't believe that somebody with that much business with Anthony like has nothing to hide. I've said it myself, right? And and I, I hope I have been polite and courteous, but I've asked you questions that the answers aren't, you know, maybe always easy. But I really, really super appreciate your answer so far. And I will note, I'm gonna I think Hideki, you know, said it earlier, you will never win on Twitter or Reddit or 4chan. So at a certain point, like you said, do what's right by you. And then you can sleep at night, and that's the best you can do. Um, well, yeah, it, it went a long way, Justin. And I don't think I should have had to explain myself to those people. But um, at the same time, I don't think they're angry for no reason. I mean, I feel like Anthony's probably affected their life in some way um, for them to do that. And for the majority of them, whenever they, they were faced with, with what I showed them and, and I was willing to answer anything they asked me, I think a lot of them just just shifted and, and I'm still there. I check in a little bit just to see if anybody says anything because I don't want to get on the wrong side of that. But I did some dumb shit and I, I worked with somebody who was a crook. But I mean, I, at the end of the day, that's as far as it goes. I mean, there's nothing more and, and, and nothing more will ever come out of it. And the fact that I'm I'm helping a, a lawyer doing only investigative stuff. I mean, if I did something wrong, he'd be the first one to uncover it. Um, they're doing a bunch of forensics and, and, and things like that. Um, I didn't even notice this thing is computer forensics, but um, I'm going to go get my phone, um, you know, scanned so they can not because they did it wrong, because I want to give them everything I've got on, right. on Anthony to help take him down. So, I mean, I, I mean, if I can go to jail for being a dumbass, then I'd, I'd probably get life because of how it turned out. But um, Would you, <laughs> would your wife tell you she was right then, too? <laughs> no, for sure. Yeah, and when so, he was at the office the other day, she said, you know, if something bad happened, she wasn't coming to get me. Um, I, I just – we weren't sure how it was going to go when I saw him. Um, but he was very he was very kind and, and, and you know, he, there were no bad words. He, you know, he, he admitted his wrongs. He, he wanted to make it right. That's where we were at in it. Um, I just don't think there was a way forward, especially without his team. I believe everybody had left him at that time. And I'm not sure without Z and those guys he could do it anyway. Have have you heard anything from law enforcement as far or or lawyers? You know, I used to talk to a lawyer that they're looking at any type of the way that the money was like shifted around in his accounts or wire, you know, potential wire fraud or anything like that. No, I was asked about counts um, if I knew where they banked or anything like that, and I just simply are, are, I'm sharing all of my wire transactions with them going forward. You know sure. what we paid them, what he's paid us, stuff like that. Okay. I got a couple of super chats I want to grab here. By the way, Wesley, I want to reiterate with uh, Squatch said before, uh, we, we stream for probably a little about two hours or so. You know, anytime you're ready to cut out or you're ready to go, I mean, you've answered so many questions. You know, just let us know when, you know, because we, we're going to be on even when you're gone. We'll still be chiming on about other stuff. So, you know, you're, I, obviously you're, you're welcome to say as long as you like, but uh, I just don't want you to feel like, oh, my God, are these guys ever going to, you know, going to end? So. You know, it's up to you when, whenever you want. But we have Shogun, $2 chat, says, Wes, what sold you on TPG? Was it this lifestyle on social? It, really, it was I, I was trying to buy a gift, and um, he answered the call. He got me what I needed. It was quick, smooth, and, and that was it. That's it. I mean, if it wouldn't have been for that, we never would have done anything more. Gotcha. And we got Chris from the Watch Lounge says, uh, don't go on the TW word of advice. <coughs> And then we have Duco, our man Duco with the $10 chat says, thanks, Wesley, for sharing. It's appreciated and wish all the best. Well, I mean, for, for all the, you know, Reddit is known for trolls, right? I mean, that's what people go there for to, you know, hide, hide on the thing and go to town on people. So I think it's fair to say that, um, 
you know, you've had some pushback in the chat that I've saw, but for the most part, I think, um, you know, people are appreciative that you've come on to tell you a story and, you know, really put it all out there. I mean, I know we've said multiple times to you, if it's something you shouldn't answer or legal advice, whatever, you know, don't answer it. And you've been quite open. Uh, you know, you've answered literally everything everyone has asked. For the record, I did send Anthony uh, the link as well after, you know, Wesley said that, you know, what he said before. I would wasn't going to do it before because I don't want Wesley to feel like, you know, it was like a, any type of ambush thing going on. But, you know, everybody's welcome to tell their side here. That's what this is all about, you know, getting it all out there. Um, and I do appreciate it. I appreciate it. Does anyone else have any quest questions for uh, Wesley? Anyone else? Uh, no, I think that uh, you've been straight up. I think you've been, like JJ was just saying, you haven't, you know, squandered around any questions. You've been very forward. Um, you know, I would say someone to come out here and come into a huge public you know, platform that could reach billions of people and say all this and put it out there. I think, uh, you know, take some courage to do that as well. And uh, we certainly appreciate your time here. You know, I appreciate it. You know, you've answered all my questions, What you know, what I seem very honestly. So I think, you know, my only question to Wesley is, is how would you like people to get in touch with the, the lawyer um, <laughs> and provide that information? Um, so I, I've been asked not to give it um, away directly um, because he don't want the people coming after him like came after me. But okay. um it, you know, um, JJ's got my, my WhatsApp information I and mean, feel free to give it to him. Um, if I don't respond quickly, I've got a lot going on, but, um, right, right. and also all the people on, on the Reddit deal, I, I told him just to message me there. And I mean, I'm glad to put him in touch with the right thing. I, um, I'm also not giving them law enforcement information, but if I can get their information, I give it to the law enforcement I'm dealing with. And I know they've made contact with, with the majority of the people already. Yeah, sweet. Okay. So you could get them on uh, Reddit. I could uh, do some a little uh, some intermediary on Instagram if you guys aren't following. It's JJ's Watch Hangout on Instagram. Um, we got a super sticker from uh, the Skate Reel. Thank you very much. We got Pivoting Genius with the five dollar. I love that name, Pivoting Genius with the five dollar super chat. We're all assuming that Coach is broke. What if he has consistently cashing been consistently cashing out real cash, and now that this blows up, he has an exit. Um. I mean, I'd like to chime in here. I, I, that's a possibility, but I highly doubt it because when you live in that lifestyle and you're so caught up in it, you think it's going to last forever, uh, and it doesn't. Um, so, I mean, I don't know what you think about that, Wesley. Do you think it's a there's a, a conspiracy that there's some money buried somewhere? Or I mean, I don't really think it does, but who knows? I, I, my feelings are he showed us how bad he is with money. I, I feel like he blew every dollar he had as it came in. And he was, right, that's what was I said. Robert Peter to pay for <laughs> To me, it seems like he's rocking to the wheels fall off. There was no contingency plan. No, you know, stick, stick even a hundred thousand in a suitcase buried somewhere. Nothing. Um, but it could be possible, but I, I doubt it. And we have another $10 super chat from APR TV. Thank you. APR TV. You've been great tonight. Uh, last question. Thank you, JJ and panel. What does he say about his internet following? That's a pretty good question. Like, has Anthony ever said like uh, anything in specific about the people who follow him online? Like, does he appreciate his fan base? Is that something he loves, or does he kind of resent or like? No, I mean, I think it's kind of as like his um his claim to fame as a social media stuff. I think he credits all the success that he has had to that. Um, and, and I think I can probably agree. You know, all of his ups have been because of that, but ironically, all of his his downs have probably been you know directly blown up because of that as well. Hmm. Interesting stuff. He is definitely an interesting character, that's for sure. I know uh, even like Brian, you've you've covered him quite quite extensively throughout uh, throughout. I would say what over a year at least, right? You've been covering. Uh... Yeah, I, I haven't talked about him in quite a while, but of course now this came up, so right. it kind of reinvigorates all that. But no, he was supposed to come on and do an interview after I don't know one of the alleged fucking things that he was involved in and he he kept delaying it delaying and delaying it and then he's like oh send over your questions i want to take a look at it and he and uh it was when he was starting his channel up again and he uh basically just took my questions and went and did a live with my material and he was like oh i was supposed to do this over here but i'm just gonna do it on my channel i'm like all right great so and that's kind of like i think he um I mean, I think whenever he, he tries to take control of something and, and spin it um, his way. Um, and, and, I mean, the sad thing is, I think that probably from what I understand is if he would have had somebody to help him manage his money, 
I think he probably could have been a, a real success. I mean, I just – that's why I invested in, in, in the way that I did and giving him inventory, and I really looked into helping because – at the end of the day, I think he does got talents. I mean, I'm not trying to get people coming after me again, but, I mean, again, me and Z laughed about it. You know, we said if we handed somebody a watch and he was going to walk to the mall, you know, he'd sell it within five minutes of being there. And, and Z commented that he'd probably sell it before he got there. Um, he's just mm – -hmm. he can do that stuff. But once he gets it, it's just bad. And and, and when you put him in control of people's uh, livelihood – I mean, that's the reason in my business. Um, I didn't graduate high school, but um, I've got a lot of really smart people there. Um and I'm good at what I do, and they're good at what they do. So you've got to have a mix of both or else you wind up just like a lot of people are right now. That's kind of what I've always said about him is that, you know, he has the abilities, obviously he has the, the you know, the knows how to uh, cause drama, get people to follow him. He's, he's very good at social media, uh, creating that space. And I said, and I always said that too, if he would have just had someone to manage his money, just like you said, he would have been that guy. He would have been the guy that he was trying to be. You know, I yeah, because he was definitely it. a mover, man. He could yeah. sell the shit out of stuff. It just, he didn't, you know, I think it was like when, you know, it people are impatient, right? They don't want to wait to actually get that Lambo and make 20 sales. They want it from the first one and say, oh, I'll figure out a way to pay that guy back after. And you get caught in a, like a quicksand trap. You know, it, it's, 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 it's a tough thing. It's, you know, when you mismanage money, when, you know, you, you just come into it and you come into it so fast. I mean, there was such a storm, right, from, like, you know, all the lockdowns and stuff. And everyone was watching YouTube. I mean, everything was getting so, um, so busy, so quick. And he was in the right place at the right time. He had the right personality for it. And I think it was just too much too fast. Um, I got some – I think my thing froze here. I don't know. Yeah, we, so I want to apologize to the audience. StreamYard is having problems with, I think, the total volume. So the last few Super Chats – have not come through for us to pull them up. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm going to ask, you know, Pivoting Genius uh, uh, with the Super Chat. Thank you, Pivoting Genius. Wesley, have you ever watched an episode of Watch Nicholas? I don't want any hate, but I'm not sure what it is. I'll, I'll watch it tonight. <laughs> I mean, maybe sit over. I mean, I, um, again, I don't do a lot of stuff. Like I, I work a lot and then when I get home, it's the kids and I'm just exhausted. We get up and do it again the next day. Watch Nicholas has been covering TPG since like the media blackout and all that stuff and been telling people like, you know, uh, watch out, you know, this is a problem. This is an issue. And he got a ton of flack. Um, I think actually it's pretty well known. Like TPG tried to put out his information and it was the wrong guy. It was like someone else's family that he put out. Um, and he received a lot of flack as like a hate troll, because of all the nasty stuff and videos uh, about TPG, but he, it sort of got rescinded quite a bit towards the end recently now, because it turns out a lot of it was true. And if people were listening to what he was saying back then, they might not have been in the position they are now. So. And he's yeah. still actively covering the watch uncle channel, still actively covering the situation. Right. And there is a, another question from Anthony P. Um, can Wesley clear up what happened with Anthony and the Kush jewelers situation? Good if question. you know anything about it for that matter. No, um, I don't know anything about it. So I think, I mean, what I know about it is what, what I've heard from friends and I've seen online, but um, I think that was maybe Wednesday or Thursday. Um, I haven't talked to him since the previous Saturday. Um, I think from what I've seen from people who know the, the Kush guys is that they saw the same thing that I did. Um, we could help this guy um, help pay back his debt and he can help, us do 10 times more business than what we already do. And I don't know that's the case. Um, that's the reason that I looked at it. In the end, I got crucified for it. I, I think that um, they backed out because of the same thing. I think they probably got completely blown up and they realized that what they thought was a good idea was, was not such a good idea. And I don't know those people at all. Um, I really didn't. I've never heard of that business until somebody mentioned it on a, on a, a YouTube video, but um, that, that's it. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm assuming that's why they would do that. And, Honestly, it makes sense to me, um, but I understand why people would get hate for it as well. Yeah, yeah. So, just... if the folks, if you have liked uh, how this interview was conducted, right? We we tried to be fair and get uh, the questions answered without turning this into a, a either a bloodbath or a, a spectacle. We do appreciate your upvotes. Please subscribe um, for future interviews and content. Uh, Wesley has made it clear that if you are one of the victims in the audience, um, 
what you should do uh, is is proxy through JJ, which you can do via Instagram DMs. Be patient because I'm sure there will be plenty of DMs. And with a little bit of validation, then we'll hand you over to Wesley, who will then do further validation before he hands you over to either law enforcement or the attorney. Wesley has graciously said that he is volunteering to pay retainers to help people who don't have the legal means to see what their options are. Um, that as far as I can tell, has also been independently verified by somebody on Reddit as well, that Wesley has indeed done that for at least one victim that I spoke to separately. So we have reason to believe that's absolutely true. Um, let's see, since StreamYard's broken, did we get any other... Yeah, no, I, don't, I, I opened up uh, the uh, WhatsApp. Uh, to For those who don't know, if you're a member of the channel, um, there's a join button. Um, for the f a feature of that, we have a WhatsApp group where people are. So I opened up the panel just to our WhatsApp group members. If anybody would like to join, the link is in the WhatsApp group. If anybody else wants to come on and, uh, you know, join the panel, we're going to open it up. Um, and we got uh, Jake Brooks with the $5 chat says, when you shook his hand, did the aroma of cocoa butter resonate? I don't know what that means. But... <laughs> so, and, 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 you know, he looks online, you don't know, but he's a, he's not a – He's not a big guy, you know. I, I didn't know what to expect, but he's he's much much shorter than I thought. I mean, he's in good shape, obviously, but I mean, I, I didn't hear all the uh, the the Tugger jokes and all that shit until this week either. So I just I wasn't aware of any of that stuff. And again, I, I, I thought a lot of the guy. So I mean, I'm a I'm you know, I just didn't fall for all that stuff. And in the end, I wish I would have. And if you're waiting for somebody, I just want to be clear. If 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 there's anything that y'all want to ask that you've just been kind of holding back out of being respectful, you know, right now, I mean, just go for it. I mean, I just it's simple to me. Um, I'll always be honest with you. Where no, I'll, you know, I'll be honest with you. Like there are things that I would ask privately that I will never ask on air, and I won't even if you offer because okay. I there's from my perspective, there's no reason to kick you or other victims. Right. Because it because a lot of people looked at this, including myself, as I've said, is like victim is almost a spectrum. Right. I'm convinced this is just me. Right. There's always more to the story. But Wesley's at least 90, 95 percent the victim, like bare minimum, because ultimately he's lost a million dollars that Anthony's not arguing. Right. And that that, you know, that's going on. So. So, no, I mean, I've enjoyed it. I also think yeah. that I'm of the opinion, Brian, who runs a. You know, Brian's channel, by the way, he covers a lot of true crime or not. It's linked in the description. Please consider subscribing. But Brian and I both have uh, interest in and adjacency to law enforcement. In my case, you know, prior professional experience working with lawyers and law enforcement on um, uh, digital forensics, DFIR and, and type work. So I want to, at this point, you've shared a ton of information. I actually want to see what happens now. I want data from law enforcement points you know maybe indictments with bulleted stuff to actually come out and i don't think that's up to reddit or the internet to try to extract by force from wesley and, right. and one thing's for sure um with something this big and this many victims anybody directly involved is gonna um is gonna have some trouble so i mean time will tell the truth and i think everybody will uh there's a lot of questions i've got but i think there's no doubt about the people you know, who he's worked with and things like that. I mean, we're all going to know sooner than later. I just, I know with the people involved now, um, it's not going away. Um, you know, something's going to happen one way or the other very soon. Right. Well, these things take time. People think it happens overnight. That's not, listen, especially when it comes to like agencies, like they give you enough rope, you know, and they, they, they're not, they're not impatient. I'll put it that way. They, they could wait years if they want up to, yeah, I'm not saying in this case they will, but in cases they do, you know, and most of the time they do that on purpose to give you more and more trouble. And, but, and uh, I think yeah. you mentioned yeah. that, but I think maybe they have been, you know, for years or, or some, it, it, this didn't just start is all I'm going to say is like, they've been following this a lot longer than what I, what I realized. Interesting. Right. And we have a chat from Brian from the let's talk live podcast. He says, my two bucks is that Anthony Farrow will make a response video tomorrow. Could be, could be very possible. Um, be interesting to see, I, but he did say he quit YouTube, so you know you got to take him at his word, right? I mean, yeah. it, it's pretty funny how day one he was, I'm not going anywhere, this and that, and then by day five it was erased, and by day six it was I'm leaving YouTube forever. Like it, he didn't even make it a full week of attempting to, uh, you know, his road to redemption. So it'd be interesting and, to see where he goes from there. I, I wish it didn't go down the way it did, and I mean, I feel like Anthony can. Um... I think he can put all his energy into helping the people that, you know, that, that he's, that he's done wrong. And he's admitted that he's done wrong. And, um, 
I've done Wesley, things in my past. Wesley, just, man, yeah. I'm sorry, man. Don't, don't believe that for a second. Don't believe, don't believe that, that dude. for a second. Well, well what, what I'm saying is that if he would put that energy into making things right as opposed to just trying to blame everybody else, I think he can do a little bit of good for, for helping the people that he owes is what I'm hoping. It, I'm it's glad you're hoping, cry. but don't hold your breath either. Right. Yeah, no, don't hold I, your breath. I, I, I don't expect much. Right. I just, you know, you, you mentioned a redemption making- story is always great, though. I, I get yeah, that. I get what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, it's I highly mean, unlikely. I, <laughs> yeah, I just meant more along the lines of maybe like, doing something to. I mean, maybe he goes to the authorities. Put it. Put everybody at peace. You know what I mean? Just, just quit the guess, and maybe he can talk to him. And I doubt he would do it, but there's a lot he could do to take some of this off everybody else's shoulders. Right. And we got a so chat. We have two other for leap. Uh, is that the one you were going to read? Patel for no, leap? There's one from Brenton Meadows above that. <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't see that one. Okay. So we have uh, a chat from Brenton Meadows. Hey, Wesley, if you find a nice steel and gold Daytona, message me. Is that is what I was about <laughs> to buy from Anthony? Trust you more than the dealers. Brenton Meadows is in Australia, by the way. And I don't know uh, if Wesley wants to be in the wash healing business, but Wesley, you have a <laughs> potential go. buyer. Oh, you can Maybe. always hit up Luxuria. Yeah, if you if you look it up, there's a lot of very very reputable dealers out there, and um, you know that's what they do. Just do your research, unlike I did. That's what I'd say. There you go. I, I, we have Patel Philippe with the five dollar chat says, Brian, this is your opportunity to rebrand as Crime Peace Gentleman. <laughs> that's <laughs> great. <laughs> yeah, the, the the Crime Peace Gentleman thing has been going around for a while. Yeah, that's great. I think you know. So- when you bring this type of energy to yourself, you're going to get negative energy, right? Like the whole media blackout thing. You could call it marketing genius. And yeah, you'll get a lot of eyeballs, but sometimes you could get mostly negative, you know, impressions. So it just is what it is. It's a risky game. Wesley, do you know um, if it's just, you know, when you say law enforcement, is it just police or is there any type of like IRS or anything involved like that? I, I don't, I know there's, um, Multiple levels of law enforcement involved. Gotcha. Is, is say. I don't, I don't yeah. know about the other stuff. Because that's all you got to say. Someone didn't pay their taxes. You call the IRS. They're knocking on someone's door. <laughs> and, and, and that about the PPP stuff. Like I'm not uh, a good with. Um, I'm not smart like that. But I've got very good accountants, and they, uh, you know, they they make sure you do things the right way. When you do business on a big scale, I mean, you've got to. And it's just those things are just that they put out there just kind of funny to me so there's a guy in the chat yo yo watches he says wesley i'm one of the persons that <coughs> never got paid for my conf- uh i don't know what he wrote here but as far as consignment yeah it says con- condiment but okay consignment is your lawyer helping out other victims 27.5 thousand lost so i think wesley said before to reach out to him that he was uh graciously um going to put people in contact with an attorney he kind of put a cash pool together for uh yo yo watches you could uh hit me up uh you can actually get in touch with him directly on reddit right there's a way to get you on reddit and then you could also message me um on instagram and i could try to put you in touch once you message me i'll get back and forth with wesley and see if you know that would, you confirm that, would probably, that that'd probably be the easiest way i don't check that reddit thing a lot so is just... there an e- is there an email address yeah. people can get in touch with you you know, the best thing to do I, before you give out an email address, Wesley, if you want, I could do a follow up for you, make a different one. So it's yeah, separately for that. And you could and you could keep track of it. Um, I could give it to the people like if anyone messages me on Instagram, I could just direct them to your yeah. new email. But I would I would advise you to make a different Gmail just specifically for that stuff. So it's easy. I, I, I'll make one and I'll, I'll text it to you and then they could just reach out there. OK, sounds good. So, yeah, if anyone has any questions, you could. Uh, Instagram, JJ's Watch Hangout, and uh, I'll give you his new email once he makes it, and you can get in contact that way. I think that would be the the best play. The smartest thing to do, yeah. So, so Wesley, I do have a couple other questions. I was debating which ones were I feel comfortable asking. This one I feel comfortable asking. So, my understanding is, again, from Reddit, that you were still active on the Moto Groups, like, as recently. Wait one second. Days, right? Um, oh, is that oh, my on the Moda Groups? Moda. M-O-D-A. Right. No, all of the um, all of the hate that um, some of the people got over the weekend, um, some of the mods there, they wanted to distance themselves from that. And um, yeah, I don't think they 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 weren't rude to me, but they just said they said it's just time. I, I'm I'm tired of carrying your cross with the Reddit people. You know, you know, fix that and you can come back. And and that's just that's what they said. Um, mm-hmm. You know, they just they were getting so much hate, and I can see it because what I yeah, was getting because of obviously. 
I, and those people are busy. There's like 70,000 people in that group. So I imagine if they just dealt with one message a month from every person in the group, they'd be dealing with, you know, 75,000. So you put all the Reddit crowd in there that was blowing them a lot of heat. Um, I, I respect where that came from. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. So they, at least they treated with dignity, but they did draw a line. They, they right. did. Uh, and, and, and they left it, you know, hey, you know, get this worked out and, and get on the right side of things. And, and, you know, maybe we'll get you back. But it wasn't like um, it wasn't negative. But I have found out that maybe I don't want to say he defended me, but but he put up with a lot <clears> before, <throat> he, before he finally made that. Decision. Motor, yeah. it, it wasn't like a, I mean, it was very respectful is what I'd say. It wasn't nasty towards me. But it's not even something you necessarily want to go back to based on what you were saying earlier. No, no, I would, I would, I'd love to, not so much because I want to do a bunch of selling. There's a lot of um, just enthusiasts and things like that in those groups. So, I mean, it's and you would collect her first based on what you said. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I really, I want to be a part of all that. Um, but it's just, they don't need all that negative heat right now. And I, I respect that. So, people who, who have kind of followed Reddit are already familiar with what you do for a living and how you make your money. That keeps coming up in the chat. Um, uh, is that something you know that you want to address? How you kind of got to your baseline before watches became a hobby for you? I mean, just um, grew up. Um, I mean, we, we were poor. I mean, just you know, had the best mom and dad in the world. And whenever I was about time to graduate high school, um, I just I didn't want to do it no more. I, I, I had a, a very like four point oh, and a month before it was time to graduate, I just quit. I told my dad I couldn't go back and. He respected it. And dad was like a plumber. He worked for a local company. Um, one Saturday he had like a little side job. Um, and I went and helped him do it. I made like a thousand dollars in four hours. Um, I knew that's what I wanted to do. Um, so, you know, 17 years later, that's where I'm at now. And we've got, we've got a good business and, and we've got a really strong following and, and it's, um, I mean, it's good, but definitely nobody's getting rich in the, uh, in the wash industry, unless they know something I don't know. Yeah, I think it takes, uh, you know, I mean, it, it would take a lot of time and effort, like, to really building up piece by piece. But uh, I don't know. I'm not in that industry myself. I know, contrary to some popular b belief, uh, we, you know, we're, we're just uh, collectors here. And we do this mostly for the fun. And the thing is, like, you know, people talk. Everyone watches these shows. I mean, I don't know if you're aware, but there's other shows out there that are defending his actions. And, you know, that's their position. That's their prerogative. Um I think it's good to put out the counterpoints out there. And, you know, when, you know, we I had heard from our mutual uh, person of contact, I, I thought it was great to actually have some, you know, another side of the story out there, which you don't normally get. Um, you know, so it, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's a crazy situation. It really is. I mean, to see it um, unfold, you, you know, you're always welcome to give an update if you want. Uh, I want you to feel like, you know, to, I know you don't have a platform on YouTube, so I do want to always give you that. Uh, as I give anyone who has anything they want to say, um, you know, I would gladly uh, give them the platform. I just want to get Mr. Zoso's chat here. He says, justice for Watch Nicholas, respect for JJ and panel. Great job tonight. I mean, look, at the end of the day, Watch Nick has been saying about this for quite a long time. You know, so I guess we'll see where the chips fall at the end of this, you know. Uh, but I do just want to take a quick second. We have over 1,300 watching. We have 320 upvotes. If you guys are enjoying today's content, please give us an upvote. It does help us uh, push out to the algorithm. And if you want to see some more stuff like this, uh, please consider subscribing. We do appreciate it. And uh, that's about it. I just wanted to put that out there. Little, we also uh, have you know, Brian who, who, who joined us. And uh, after this thread, you'll be pushed over for a brief uh, bit of entertainment after this video on Mookie's channel. Um, mm -hmm. and then young Brando has a show later, but we have links for Brian Mookie and young Brando in the description. Uh, if you like the content, the type of interviews you've seen here today, or if you're, and especially in particular, if you're a huge watch enthusiast, then, um, we've got content from all three people that will fit all three bills. Um, uh, right. the man, I have one more question for Wesley on the, you know, the Anthony bit. You've already covered that you kind of, you talked to Z, you really didn't know Darby other than they came and, you know, filmed and you didn't know, no, uh, uh, Marco Nicolini and stuff. So you're here now, you know, everybody's names, you know, the whole tug, Tony Tugger stories, <laughs> like all these things you didn't know before. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's upended your life for the past week. 
right? You you know all this. Are you still a watch enthusiast, or are you just sick and tired <laughs> of? Good like, question. will you ever look at wristwatches the same way? Like, is it just dampened? No, it's just. I think I got involved with the wrong person. Um, I mean, listen, I've been doing this kind of just for fun for what five or six months. I've met so many really, really good people. And it's just, there's very few like out there, like Anthony, at least in my dealings, you know, I've met five or six people I've had disagreements with, but for the most part, it seems like a really good community of people. I mean, you guys are here just because, uh, you know, you know, y'all are based around it. So it's, I don't look at it badly in every, in every business and every organization, there's, there's good and bad. And, um, I just so happened to fall in with, you know, one of the worst, um, and, and I was blind about it. I didn't realize it until the end. So it's just as much my fault as it is anybody else's. You know, I should have I should have done better research. I should have seek better advice. Um, and, and I didn't. All right. Now we got uh, two more super chats. We got a mega super chat from our man, Marco Ferrante, who is a watch dealer over at Luxury Bazaar. And more importantly, a good friend of the show before he was ever into uh, watch dealing. He was just a young watch enthusiast back then. He says, $100 Super Chat, please consider subscribing to the best live stream for watches on the tubes. Well deserved. You are the man, JJ. Love you, brother. Thank you, Marco. Greatly appreciated, my man. Um, so happy to see Marco who got to where he's gotten um, you know, under Roman's tutelage, uh, working hard, doing it the right way, and making a killing with some sales. Marco is a very young, gifted man. That would be a guy you would you would have want to run into. Uh, you know, yeah. He's only, what, 22 now, Marco? 23? And uh, he's I, mean, I think it. you just said Roman's tutelage. I think that's going to be another blow up video between Roman and Adrian arguing. It was at Roman's tutelage. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, we're mostly Adrian, too. Yeah, yeah, both of them <laughs> got to give Adrian his credit. I call Adrian the final boss because he, you know, he's the last guy you got to fight to get your last uh, little discount when you negotiate prices. Uh, yeah, Adrian's my favorite character. <laughs> there, there's good. several good guys over there, though. Like, there's a, a few young guys that I've had some dealings with, and they all, for the most part, are like really good. I mean, really good, easy to Larger do. Bizarre. Uh, I, I got a good question for you. Maybe, you know, I shouldn't, uh, I don't know, whatever. I guess I'm just going to ask it uh, the plainest way I know how. You see people in the chat, and I think a lot of them personally are just motivated to go against uh, them for political reasons in the in the YouTube watch uh, community space. But were they in any way involved in anything nefarious that you've seen or, um, you know, any, any shady dealings there? Or do you feel like they were pretty fair and pretty honest as watch dealers? Who's that? Uh, uh, like Roman or anyone from right. Luxury Bazaar? Um, I mean, I, I don't know a bad thing about them. Um, I've, the mm. only place I've ever heard anything bad about those guys is, um, you know, some of the internet chats. I mean, I don't, I've never right. seen like a, nobody come forward and say they've had a, a bad deal with them. And and um, and I know in my own business, you can't make everybody happy. But if if right. you know. They do more business than most people, I think. So I think they're very, very good stand-up people. And at the same time, I've never met any of them. So I mean, I'm not just. Yeah. just well, I mean, I, I've met some of them personally. I've never had a bad dealing, or know anyone who's had a bad dealing. Also, but I, I specifically asked that question because um, I know people will say like, "Oh, JJ went soft on not asking that for a reason." So I purposely wanted to put it out there just to have it on record that I did ask you if there's been anything, you know, shady. I, I doubted there was anyway, but I just wanted to get it from your, you know, from your head. I mean, I think if anybody wanted to do this for a living, that's kind of who you would look towards. I mean, he he always did something the right way is, is how I see it. Right. And we have another super chat from Legend Has It Man. $5 chat says, I got ripped off on an Anthony Rub and Tug. Did you get ripped off or did you get... <laughs> Right. Um, what did you think about that? That's a, I just this is kind of a more laid back question. Now you I said you know, hands with him. <laughs> no, but I'm saying you said like when you met him, right? That you know uh, when, when when you first spoke to him, I should say, not met him. You like you were kind of impressed by him, the, his ability to move watches. He was in the industry. He was like a mover and a shaker. And then it turns out you find that all this crazy shit, like you know. All, all these bad dealings and all this negative stuff and all the rub and tug and the whacking people off, whatever. I mean, I don't know how much of it's true. I'm just saying, all the rumors you hear, like, was it like a total whirlwind? Like, what the hell? I thought this guy, I had him up here and now I have him like over here. I don't know. I just, at the end of the day, I think, I think he's a, he's in the watch business or he was, but, but he's a salesman. And, and part of that, you got to sell yourself. And, 
he definitely <laughs> made me believe every bit of it. I mean, not not like that, but you know what I mean. Like he sold himself as a good person. Um, <laughs> I really I didn't mean that as a dick. You know, I don't understand how it came out, but like he made me believe everything that he was saying. I felt confident in doing stuff with him. And it's the you know, same thing as buying a car when you walk in there. You don't deal with some you know bullshit sales, and you deal with somebody that makes you feel good and, and you can relate with. And that, that's how it that's how it felt for me at the time. And you know, I guess that's just a skill. Right. You're like Anthony. I like you, but can we just not shake hands anymore? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you guys. Let me tell that's you. That's brutal. Y'all gonna want more? Like, I got. I got a ten dollar chat here from the pivoting genius. Um, he says. Back when I got this username, Anthony got his security guard, I'm not going to say names, from Home Invasion in time to send me threatening messages with photos of him pointing guns. All talk, no action. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, sorry, guys. I can't pull up the Super Chats, by the way. The, um, the thing is frozen. Yeah, Everybody so broke the frozen. I think we broke the internet with so many viewers uh, <laughs> wanting to hear Wesley's story and you know yeah. hear what he had to say. Um, I just wanted to ask Ali, are we are we going to do the rates or are we not going to do we, the hey, rates? Wesley, what do you feel about horse races or doll races? Are you interested? <laughs> so at like the end, we we do. Uh, I'll explain to you what it is at the end of <laughs> during every show. Like you know, you see pe people are super chatting, right? Um, we keep track of it and we put everyone who who does super chat in a race and at the end there's a winner and they win like super chat of the day basically which they just get entered into every daily one because uh, i don't do it daily but we do like a couple streams a month they all get entered and at the end of the month they win a prize we kind of just do it for a little fun <laughs> to keep it interesting at the end of the show have a little laugh you know and it's kind of silly races uh ali has all different types of you know we horses camels penguins they all kind of race and we were going to, you know, being that we're keeping it light now, we were going to kind of wait till you finish the interview. But being that you're hanging with us, we're going to wrap up in like uh, eight minutes anyway. So, um, you know, at the end of the show, we kind of just do it. So last call, guys, if you're getting your chats in to get into the race. It's a cartoon it thing, Wesley. It's like right. cartoon. It's a cartoon. Right. Came, yeah. It's just funny. Yeah. So so uh, I, we got two super chats here. We got Chris from the Watch Out says, I wouldn't be in the great spot that I am had it not be for Luxury Bazaar. Thank you very much, Chris. And then we have the NARC with five dollars super chat says, "Congrats, JJ, on the coup. Just don't implode." Okay, hi, watch Nicholas, watch Nicholas, Mookie. Good time. I don't know what he's saying. Uh, then we got Nolex with five dollars says, "Hi, JJ. I am picking up an overseas Moonphase retrograde date tomorrow. Nice. From where did you get the white rubber strap? Congrats, Nolex. That's a great watch." Uh, call up your uh, Vacheron uh, authorized dealer. They sell it. Don't buy it for seven hundred on the gray. You can order it in like three weeks. You'll have it for like 300 bucks. Then we got Toyota Mo, $2. My penguin wants nothing to do with you, Ali. Poor Toyota Mo. He, his penguin sucked, Wesley, in the last race. He fell asleep at the start. He didn't even run. And then we got another $20 super chat from Eric D. Here's to our hero, Watch Nicholas. There we go. A lot of love for Watch well Nick. Well done, Nicholas. In the chat tonight. Can't go wrong there. We uh, do appreciate Watch Nick. Okay. Excuse All me. All right. So we got, what, another minute and a half and then we close it out and we'll do the race and then we got <laughs> Mookie with a $10 super chat says horse race <laughs> everyone loves the races <laughs> um, Wesley anything else you want to say before because we, we got um, seven minutes to go and then we're going to wrap so I want to make sure you know if you have anything you want to say before we do our little race and do our outro and all that if you, you know anything else uh, you want to put out there no I just I know um, there's still a lot of things that are said everywhere just um I'm confident if you give a little bit of time, um, everybody will get the answers they want. And there's a lot of things I wish I could say, but um, I, I can't. Um, but there's a, I mean, I think people are going to get what um, the justice that you know that they deserve, and um, I really hope that you know everybody can be made whole again. And um, I hope it don't you know put too bad of a a stain on you know the industry that is there. I mean. I'm very hesitant to say anybody's name, so I won't because of what happened to me. But there are some really genuinely really good people in the business, um, and, and and they're not hard to find. Um, so there's, I mean, I just hope everybody don't look at everything as a as a negative. You've you've mentioned some really good names, and there's a lot more that would you know definitely take care of people. It's really yeah. not a making money. Um, just some shout out to our friend Nico as well, Nico Leonard of Pride Nico and Nico Leonard of Pride and Pinion, yeah. Um. You know, we, 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 there are quite a few dealers that I use personally and uh, really enjoy. Um, 
and those are definitely some of them. Uh, I just want to get a few more of these chats. But guys, that's it. It's closed after Barry. You got Japanese Barry in oh, the house with 320 yen. Uh, pork Chop with $5 Canadian says, great show, AT. gents. PJ says, my horse's name is Narc Sucks. Okay, thank you, PJ. And then Brenton Meadows, $5, says, Anthony is toast from here. If I was him, I'd just turn up to the nearest federal prison and just say, hi, I have a reservation, frequent flyer <laughs> club lounge, <laughs> and Mr. GMT with a $5 <laughs> super sticker. Okay, so that's it. Entries are closed. We'll give GMT an uh, entry because we like him. He has a spinning rhinoceros there. Um, what do you say? We're ready to run it whenever you're ready, Ali. We'll run yeah, the, give me uh, a second to load the 50-some-odd people in. Should we should we uh should we get Wesley to pick the animal tonight, being that he's our guest of honor? What do you think? So we got we got a lot of animals, but the three favorites are horses, greyhounds, or camels. And, and they run a cartoon thing, and they run. Yeah, it's funny. You'll, I want to say like, camel run. <laughs> say camel. Right. Okay. We will get the camels loaded. And Mr. GMT was the last entry. Hey, Wesley, again, I want to thank you for sticking around with us, you know, two hours to take out of your time, you know, from your family. Like we said, we just before we went on air, you were interacting with them and, you you know, and they were going up to bed. So thank you so much for doing this and, you know, getting your story out here. And and really, you know, I, in my opinion, not shying away from anything. I mean, you answered everything pretty straightforward and said, hey, bring it on, you know. So we really do appreciate that. No problem. Thank you all for having me. All right, let's get the screen shared. And Let's do it up. All right. Yeah, as I said, there go. 53 entries. So we will give them one shuffle, see if it breaks, didn't break. There you Here go, Wesley. We <laughs> go. All right. And they're off. Loose Tooth taking an early lead. We got James May. We got Madman up in the top. Bad fans going neck and neck with Loose Tooth. And here comes Omar. Omar's really whipping his camel into shape. Let's see if he can keep the lead. Can oh, he maintain here I it? Come. Here comes Brian from the Let's here Talk Live channel. He said it would be a crime if he loses this race. <laughs> here he goes. He's holding a main Oh, team. I might win. <laughs> here comes Narc out of the backfield. Uh, the, 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 the leader never wins. It's just how these races go, man. <laughs> Uh, we got Omar. Omar's really whipping that camel. Let's go, buddy. Let's go. Basil's Bezel and Toyota Mall pulling on up. James May says, I'm not having it today. I'm going to take the lead. James May. Bye and all. We have James May. Congratulations, James May. You are tonight's winner of the Super Chat Challenge. You will be entered into the monthly sweepstakes. Uh, whoever wins the Super Chat of the Month wins a small prize and gets entered into Super Chat of the Year, which wins a bigger prize. Congratulations. Oh, Wesley, this I don't is... know if you enjoyed that, but this is what we do at the end of the show to have a little laugh. So <laughs> that's a lot of freaking camels. A lot of camels. Yeah, very good. All right, I got the picture. We could take this. You got the it. All right, here. we got it. We are all set. <laughs> so was that uh, considered a good turnout? I mean, however many people viewed tonight. Hell yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it fantastic turnout. Turn on. Yeah, I really yeah. appreciate you coming on through. Uh, what do you say? We got another uh, minute. We're going to just get this last uh, chat from Omar, who just won. He said, if I won, I would have cried racism. <laughs> Thank you, Omar. Greatly appreciate it. I don't know what just happened. I lost my screen, but not important. Everything's blown out today, Wesley. I think we broke the internet. This might be uh, the most engaged the watch community has been in a, quite a while. But yeah, We also have Laura Vandalay with 499 asking, who is Nark? Nark is our friend from Australia who is... Uh, you know, oh, you know who Narc is. <laughs> I just realized that was our van. Jo Joseph, <laughs> jo Joseph Ruski with five dollars. One of those camels looks like my ex fiance's mother. <laughs> He's getting personal here. Yeah. Oh man, oh man. All right, guys, we're gonna get ready to wrap this up. Wesley, again, greatly appreciate it. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for our friend who put it together for us. You're welcome back anytime if you want to follow up. You know where to find me. Uh, Brian, let's talk live podcast, guys. Make sure you subscribe to Brian. He has great stuff. Make sure you check out the, the Squatch Box on the gram. He has great content. Um, who else? Make sure you check out Archie Luxury, Watch Nicholas, all the channels that we always hang out around. Um, we got various links in the description for the video right. if you're looking sure you, for direct links. Yeah, check out Mookie's channel. Guys, he's got like less than 200 subs. We're going to blow Mookie up tonight. He has a great TPG mo uh, little montage video he did. We're going to link it to right now. So if you guys are in the chat, just it'll automatically switch you over to his premiere. Pretty funny little video about to pop up. It's a couple minutes, so uh, I would recommend hanging around for a few minutes just to check that out. But uh, thanks, guys. Uh, I appreciate everything. And 
we will catch you guys on Sunday night for Sunday Fun Day. Until then, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Later. Uh, hey, guys. Uh, look what I can do. <laughs>